Okay, we're live. This is Dungeon World, The Bloody Road to Bell at Osk, session one of four. So I want to go through the cats procedure really quickly. Um, the concept of, we're playing Dungeon World, the concept of this campaign, We Hunt the Keepers, it, there's a really, really basic premise upon which it all hangs. That is, there is in this campaign world um, a vast sort of uh, huge, difficult to comprehend church, okay? And there is a sect within this church, a heretical sect called the Keepers. And these Keepers have gone out into the world and they study these people, places, um, objects, mostly objects called the keys. We don't know ex precisely why they're studying these keys or why they want these keys. The church believes that they're engaged in some kind of apocalyptic conspiracy. And because of that, they hire um, basically bands of mercenaries to go out and find these keepers in the world, uh, kill the keepers, like that's always mission number one, and then secure the key, either take grab it, getting hold of it and taking it back to the church, um, hiding it is fine, uh, often destroying it is also um, the more practical thing to do. That's the basic premise on which the whole thing hangs, these groups of people going out hunting these keepers. Within each individual adventure, your characters will have their own personal drives and motivations for being on that adventure. And that'll be things that we explore in the establishing questions as we get going uh, on, the, on the adventure proper. Um, do you guys have any questions about that? All right, cool. Uh, so our aim for today, the way this campaign is set up is session one is always a distinct and separate story from the rest of the sessions, okay? So the Bloody Road to Bell at Osk doesn't actually start until next week, and it comprises session two, three, and four. Session one is a separate story called uh, The Child Who Repeats the Numbers. And our goal for today is to quickly introduce characters um, and then get straight to this one shot, basically. And I anticipate we'll finish it. And in the in the finishing of it, the, our bigger goal is just to kind of see the characters in action and learn a little bit about their backstory and kind of what they're up to. Uh, Tone-wise, it's gonna be dark fantasy, I guess. It's a dark fantasy tone. Uh, sometimes it gets a little grim, sometimes it gets a little bloody, but I anticipate this one's gonna be just fairly kind of straightforward, like kind of, uh, you know, dark fantasy, high fantasy stuff. Uh, subject matter wise, I don't anticipate anything um, particularly like uh, squicky happening in this here in the in the session. Um, the I always put a hard line on things like um, like sexual violence, I guess. Uh, but I don't. I can't imagine we've never gone there, so I think we'll probably be fine. But in any case, the X cards on the table. If you if something happens that you're not happy with that makes you uncomfortable in an unfun way, just say X card or type it in the chat or put up the, the X on the camera and we'll stop and we'll go back and we'll fix it. So um, that's that. So let's see here. I got a note that says David isn't here. <laughs> um, is that true or not? I don't know what's going on. No, I'm here. Uh, okay, all right. <laughs> I just want to confirm that you're here, David. Uh, cool. So do you guys have any questions about the cats? Is that all good? Is there any particular subject matter you guys want to put a hard line uh, across that we don't do at all? I think I think just the stuff that you said is what uh, I'm on board for as well. Yeah, I, I, I generally don't like violence against children or animals or torture either, but as long as it's like, as long as that stuff's off screen, I'm okay. I don't like to see it on screen, but otherwise. Um, and sexual violence is outright, but we can do that. So, cool. Let's introduce characters. Uh, let's have the returning character first. Uh, Fraser, tell us about Weary. Weary is a thief that's part of, um, uh, I guess, another sect in the church called the Shadow Court. Um, he is sort of like a Manchurian candidate that gets wiped uh, every mission, but Throughout the next mission, he usually starts um, getting snippets of his memory back about what's going on. And he's the longest uh, standing member of the, the company, even though he keeps getting reprogrammed all the time. Um, recently, he learned that his mother is in a shadow vault, which is like a, um, a portion in history frozen in time that is doomed to repeat itself. And the 
church for an unknown reason studies these things and that's where we ended last time so i guess from then to now weary is reprogrammed again and probably like ready to go again yeah and just to kind of key off that out of character knowledge this is definitely out of character knowledge but this first session what you guys are going to be doing is something that has been repeating right like we've seen it with other characters some version of it uh repeatedly and um someone or something is caught up in a loop here and everyone's getting and everyone's kind of like uh, a part of that so but it doesn't knowing what happened before is not necessary to enjoying this particular session so what are your flags weird all oh, right um believe a lie i've told you send me into the shadows to explore something or back you up and ask me about my history with the church hunting the keepers or perhaps my heritage and then in brackets i have i'm a bone man <laughs> that is true yes uh physiologically uh weary is um is a bone man of carcosa meaning he um He's, he's a human, but like his skin is actually like translucent. His skin and musculature is, is clear, uh, but he has shadow court magic that helps him hide that. So. Awesome. Uh, as far as this session goes, we'll see how the flags go. This first session, flags don't usually get hit too often. They, that's kind of more of a session two thing, but, uh, but we'll keep them in mind. I don't have any other questions. Does anybody else have any questions? All right. Let's talk well, about, well, oh, sorry, so go ahead. So he uses some kind of shadow magic, and it is not apparent that he has translucent skin at the outset. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you don't know that. Yeah, he, he, I, I, it's not even clear if he can like even reveal it because it's uh, it's shadow court magic he doesn't control. Right. He is very much like a weary as a tool, a tool of this sect within the church that's very. Uh, he, he's kind of like a soldier from <laughs> season. Yeah, kind, exactly. like a cold season. That's what I'm Indeed. thinking. Yes, yeah. probably. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, Rich, tell us about Rutger. I'm playing Rutger, who is a fighter of some renown. Uh, he carries the Twilight Reaver, which is very a metal. I love it. Very metal-looking sword. Uh, it is an ancient weapon that has been handed down from generation to generation, and as he has grown in power, he has unlocked. <clears throat> that, uh, at least as far as he's concerned, this is an heirloom that he can consult the spirits to reside within the sword. Now, no one else may actually hear the responses. I'm not entirely sure because I've only done it while I'm alone. But the answers are astute, so I believe in it. Who are, so are these like spirits of your ancestors in the sword? Absolutely. Okay. Great grandfather, they, uh, my great grandmother. It's, it's 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 passed through the line, but it has jumped. It's not necessarily always paternal. Uh, occasionally, will jump through the maternal line. Do you think? Um, and this is uh, to be clear for anybody viewing the video. This is this character was in a campaign that I wasn't running. But so do you? The spirits within the sword are they? Um, do they have an agenda? Do you think, or are they there just to support so, Rucker? I just bought that move. Okay, <laughs> so it can be whatever you want. <laughs> right, like, right, after cool. killing a dragon, I bought that move because I made fourth level, and that was the move I bought. So it could be whatever we want. Oh, I'm right. just imagining that Rucker at some point said a little prayer to his great grandmother, and then he heard her back. Awesome. Um, and so now hey, that, dra that dragon you fought, what was the breath weapon on the dragon? Breath weapon was like an acidish. It was acidic. And uh, we, we used lard against it, which helped to defeat his breath weapon. I love it. Cool. Thank you. Uh, I don't have any other questions about Rucker. Any more questions about Rucker? Um, is oh, there like a flags too in a minute? Sorry, go ahead. Is there like a meta level to the picture that I'm not getting? Like, it, obviously, the picture is like a famous person that I'm not aware of, probably, right? There's no meta. I just like the look of the guy. I mean, yes, it's a wrestler, uh, but who cares? He's a wrestler. Like, yeah, I recognize yeah, him. Yeah, he's like an old him. wrestler. It's yeah. no big deal. I just kind of <laughs> like the, the look. I had to look really hard for him not looking goofy. Um, uh, <laughs> okay, I, just, okay. I just wanted a really broad, uh, big dude, and that was the first person I thought of, and so... Yeah, gotcha. I'm going to ask you more about his appearance as we get going, but uh, let's talk about your flags. What flags do you have, Tom? Harm or threaten to harm an enemy that I can step in and take. And, and, sorry, harm or threaten to harm an enemy that I can step in and care or show compassion for. That's great. Uh, I think I'm pretty sure we can hit that in session. There, I think there are some opportunities for that. Get drunk and rowdy with me. 
Okay. Um, cause or encourage me to fight someone for your own gain. Okay, interesting. Cool. Uh, knowing what I know, I think the first one's probably the most hittable on this. Uh, okay. But but it's but we're starting at a party, so really the second one could come in too. <laughs> but we we'll only get the one XP, so I mean, <laughs> just let all your innocence get hammered. Uh, <laughs> Well, you get the XP when you hit other people's, but yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Sorry. Always. Uh, let's talk about Isabella Verga Strider. This is a character that we've seen before as an NPC, but now we're seeing them as a PC. David, tell us about Isabella. So Isabella is from the same order of mages as was a previous player character that I was running, Logan Stormbreaker. Uh, Logan has died, um, and Isabella has... Uh, they were they had some kind of relationship um, that was beyond just just colleagues um, and she has the last we saw her she drank of the milk white putrescence which would allow you to kind of see a solution to any problem um, and she is here to try and figure out like a way to bring him back. So oh, that's good. probably not going to be possible, but oh, I love it though. What's uh, what is your what's your magical sphere? What do you do? Uh, so hers is going to be the winter, even though she is Virgo Strider. Um, that's still like a really obvious tell. Is like she she very very subtly floats, like just just like an inch or two off the ground. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, but for the winter. She just has an aura of cold around her all the time. Um, so that is her deal. Um, I have not gone with the easiest of all alignment statements. I have chosen evil because ah, I, I think she, she is um, she's here and she knows what the what the keeper's kind of deal is. Um, and she just doesn't she doesn't care like whatever it takes to try and get get logan back logan yeah, back yeah. so you're so first and foremost you're, you're doing the hunting the keeper job just as a method of learning more about what happened to logan basically right Ex exactly okay i like that uh good so what sorts of what sorts of spells do you anticipate casting like with with winter magic what do you foresee i mean freezing lots of things i would imagine um okay. that let's see like yeah, chill to the bone, induce stasis, reveal grim portents are my aligned. Uh, so, hmm. okay, interesting. <laughs> that's so. It's almost like winter as a sort of like um, as like a symbol for like something bad coming or like death, right? Because if it reveals grim portents, that kind of implicates a certain kind of thing, right? Right, right. Winter, so, winter is coming, right? Winter, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good, good. Exactly. So it'll it'll be a little bit of a little bit of both, I imagine. Okay, good. The, the meta. And, okay. Yeah. I like that. Uh, what are your flags? So I've written two flags real quick. Try to subtly get information about my relationship with Logan and show discomfort with how I violently use magic. Oh, interesting. Okay. There, it feels like there's a good tension there between like Rutger who um, has this like compassionate streak, right? And you who are, um, sounds like you're not. <laughs> so, sounds like you do not have such a streak, so that's interesting. We'll see how that goes. Uh, I don't think I have any questions for now though. Anybody, any other questions? Um, does she, I'm wondering, cause I've obviously met her before. I'm wondering if it would be more interesting that I remember her or not remember her. Good question, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. This this whole like memory resetting is is new to me. So whatever you think, mm. you can maybe sure. allude, to, allude to how familiar Isabella seems. Right? Yeah. Sure. Without, she, like, yeah, she'll remember. Her. She'll remember you, but she yeah. probably won't make a point of it. Yeah. Right. It, so okay, cool. Um, I was going to. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, I I forgot. I, I leveled up and I took the heist move because. It seemed appropriate. I had a feeling something like this might be happening. So, <laughs> how does that move work? Um, the when you take time to plan to steal something, name the thing you want to steal, and ask the GM these questions. Um, oh, is that like a top obsession thing, or like right before that mission? Or it just seems like anytime you make a plan to steal something is the trigger. Okay. 
And then okay. when acting on the answers, you take plus one forward. So it's just like a, a better discerning specifically for the heist. Got it. What are some of the questions? I don't have the sheet in front of me. Um, who will notice it's missing? What's mm -hmm. its most powerful defense? Who will come mm -hmm. after it? And who else wants it? Oh, that's pretty good. Um, I think there will be a natural point in which you can trigger that in the story uh, based off where I know what's where the thing is, where the MacGuffin is. So, okay, we should be good there. Uh, that's interesting though. I've, I've never seen that move in play, so that'll be fun to play with. It seems like, yeah, there's no role, and I guess I ask all of them? It yeah, doesn't... it sounds like it's a sort of like, um, the trigger is when you make a plan. So basically it sounds to me like whenever you guys like kind of figure out what the thing you're after is, like either generally where it is or what you have to do, that's when you might like have the in fiction plan and then you get to ask those questions, right? I think that probably mm -hmm. makes sense. So, um, okay, good. <sighs> I'm sorry, I missed yeah. it. I know David said it, but what does Isabella look like? I know there's something about floating over the ground. I just got a little. She, uh, she like when she walks like she's like an inch or two off the ground like literally not figuratively or anything like that do, do her robes like kind of cover that so she doesn't like stand out in polite society here <laughs> <clears throat> um she has stylish robes so that that would i don't think that they completely cover it but they like come down to her feet so you'd have to look real hard to notice okay unless you're unless you're a particularly short person or something so right yeah Ch children probably pointed out to their parents, and their parents are like, "Oh, hush." <laughs> Good. Or um, maybe pull their children closer and and walk to the other <laughs> side of the street, perhaps. Uh, yeah, then she gets closer, and they can feel the cold coming off of her, and they're like, "Yeah, let's get out of here." I'm sorry, uh, uh, but what does she look like? I'm sorry, I, to I talked over you, Fraser. Uh, no, that, that that I was saying something the same. <laughs> uh, styled hair, stylish robes, thin body. I mean, that's really as far as I've thought it out. I'm gonna ask you as we get going too. So okay, and she's evil. Um, oh, <laughs> monolithically, no doubt. Um, all right, cool. Uh, I think we're ready. So you're in the you're in the great city of Eagles Reach. Eagles Reach is a major metropolis in this campaign setting world. It is nestled up in the mountains, uh, pretty high up, think like Denver. Um, and so it's, it's fairly cold and the air is thin. Um, but otherwise, it's a major hub, um, lots of commerce going in and going out. It is um, it's the location of the person that you are currently hunting, a keeper named Lord Caspian Gall. Now, Lord Caspian Gall unlike all the other keepers that you may be, know of or may have heard of, he does not hide. Uh, most of the keepers, they hide themselves, they work, you know, they do their work in crypts and, you know, abandoned temples and remote parts of the world. Lord Caspian Gaul has a big mansion in, the, in, in Eagle's Reach and he throws parties and he's really, really open about his uh, presence and existence, okay? He, his official title, based off what the church, the church's sort of like title they have given him, is Lord Caspian Gall, Keeper of the Child Who Repeats the Numbers. Your job is to kill Lord Caspian Gall and to secure the child who repeats the numbers, who is uh, being hidden away somewhere by Lord Caspian Gall. Um, the church is okay with you also. Uh, uh, basically destroying the key, the children, the child who repeats the numbers, or otherwise uh, hiding them away so that no one else can find them. Okay. Lord Caspian Gall throws parties. They are very extravagant affairs, and they happen frequently. He will throw a party for like no, like very little reason, right? Like if one of his, if one of his bodyguards or one of his, you know, maids has a baby he will like throw a big, you know, ball, you know, to celebrate that, right? Um, his birthdays are quite lavish, right? This is a masquerade ball. You're all there. Uh, you can be there together um, on like knowing each other and with common purpose, or you can be working individually and find each other in the middle of the party. I'm okay with either. But basically the way the party starts is 
many people are gathered um, in a line, uh, dressed in their finery, looking very, very, very elegant. Uh, it's And it's people from all walks of life. Like everyone puts on their best clothes that they have available to them. And they get in this line and the line proceeds uh, rather slowly up to the entrance of the house where Lord Caspian Gall asks them some questions and then gives them a mask based off the answers to their questions, a mask that they will wear during the masquerade. The three of you can be anywhere in this party. You can be working the party, you can be a guest, you can, uh, you can infiltrate any way you wish, but, and I'm gonna ask you about that now. As the party is getting going, where do we find you? Like as people are getting in that line to like enter the house. Um, Weary, where do we find you? Um, how about entering from like um, below the the establishment, like trying to sneak in? So like the like sewers or sewer system, okay? Yeah, something like that. And then coming coming up from. Uh, where, where will you be trying to come up from? Like up, up into like the kitchens or certainly not up into the middle of the party, right? No, yeah, yeah like the, probably like a kitchen or something. Okay, I like that. Mm -hmm. um, so like some sort of drainage. Uh, interesting. Are you there with the other two? Um, no, I think, I think they just did the whole like reprogram, go do this mission. There may be other keepers on this mission or not type thing. They do, yeah. They'll send like they'll, they'll hire multiple groups to go out and try to accomplish yeah. the thing, right? Multiple yeah. Groups. So I think he's on a singular mission. I think they, like I, in my mind, since the last um, series, they like like things went a little off the rails on that one. So I think they sort of were like, oh shit, like reprogram really quickly and then go send him on a singular task to get him like rooted back into. Shadow hunting hunting keepers and not asking questions. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right, okay, good. Yeah. I like that. Uh, okay, so you're so you're beneath the house in, in sort of like a sewer system coming up from the bottom. I like that. Uh, Isabella, where do we find you? Um, I'm standing in line. Okay. And we'll get to that in a second. Uh, are you there alone or are you there with Rutger? Um, I think I'm there with Rutger. Okay. Yes. Whether or not he's in line uh, is up to him. Rucker, where are you at? Totally in line. I'm in line having a, a brilliant conversation with Isabella. She's very uh, witty. <laughs> I love it. So you guys are in this line. It's moving really slowly uh, because at the front of the line, Lord Caspian is there and he like and he like peppers each guest with questions. But everyone just kind of sort of accepts it. And so part of the party is just like being in the line, right? Um, I think they're even like uh, you know, servants who come out, these servants are wearing like uh, fish masks. Um, they're, they're like kind of ornate gold fish masks, you know, with like little catfish like whis whiskers, you know, like emanating off of them. They come out, they serve drinks and things like that. Uh, the guards are also wearing fish masks, but sort of more more ferocious looking fish masks like, um, like barracudas and things like that, right? Um, so those people are kind of moving throughout the line and kind of like, you know, trying to keep you all kind of entertained or, or busy while the line is working through. Uh, Rucker, how are you dressed for this fine affair? Well, I am uh, dressed in my resplendent chainmail, which I purchased after my most recent escapade. I also have a live mink around my neck because uh, yeah, while I do have a great deal of hair, my neck gets a little cold up here in the, this frigid wasteland they call a city. <laughs> <Indeed. clears throat> uh, um, kind of a dope kind of uh, like cloak, you know, the thing that just comes over the front, like a couple of large, heavy thicks of, of black cloth, and then a kind of cape deal going around. It's very, very nice. Isabella, how are you dressed right now? What do you look like? Uh, so I'm wearing these black robes, but the, like, they're like tailored so that like off the back of everything, like it kind of is longer. Um, and those longer bits have what look like stylized icicles are in fact real icicles. Um, <laughs> so those kind of like give up, give different areas a weight and make it hang uh, in, in very, uh, I don't know. It's like, it's not the style here, but everyone can tell it's the style somewhere. 
what color is her hair and her skin? Like, what is she like? Is she kind of pale, or because she's from the she's from the far north, right? Right. Yeah. She's she's very pale, um, and she's she's brought the cold with her. Uh, I think her hair her hair is is white. Mm-hmm. Um, Are you a mother of dragons by chance? No. no. It's not silver. It's white. <laughs> um, good. Uh, I love it. Let's. Can we have that scene? The two of you just in line. Sure. So this is the keeper at the front of this line. Apparently so. He has no fear of being open. I wonder what power he holds at bay. We should strike. Ha- we should strike him down when we get to the front of the line. I see no reason to delay. Oh, there is a whole party involved. I think we should at least be polite and attend the party and then polite, kill him. Polite to the man we're going to kill. You're a strange well, one, Rutger. He has an entire retinue, and there's no guarantee that these people who are here uh, share his evil intent. <sighs> I suppose it would be more trouble than it's worth to kill all of them, too. It won't happen, my friend. Very well. We are we'll here get... for a specific purpose, not not wanton slaughter. Very well. We'll get him isolated, and then we will do the deed. And then we'll kill him. Shh. <laughs> nice. Let's talk about Lord Caskin. As you're moving closer to the line, um, he is uncommonly short. Um, he's not a dwarf. He's not a halfling, but he's really, really short. So short that like he has to stand on a little riser at the front of his door so that he can kind of be face to face with like the guests as they come up. Uh, he is uh, faintly ridiculous. Um, he's dressed in like sort of like puffy velvet shirt and you know and like a like a frilly cravat, you know, and like a little jaunty cap, right? Uh, gray hair and gray beard. And he's got that big basket of masks and a fish mask guard uh, standing up there with him. You guys are kind of all moving up. Um, just before we get to Lord Caspian, uh, I just want to find out if there's any other like sort of pre kind of like preparations, any kind of like investigations or anything going on in the line before we head up there. I want to consult the spirits that reside within my signature weapon. I think you should do that. I think that would be uh, a great way to freak out all the party goers if you start talking to your sword. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll, I'll <laughs> no, I love it. Do it. Yeah, and uh, just whisper to it. That, that, yeah, well, that, that's gonna ask you. yeah, I was going to ask you, what does it look like? Like, what does it look like when you consult? Oh, uh, well, he, he, he takes the, the scabbard and he can look over it lovingly. And then he just, he, as long as he whispers to these these particular sapphires here, you know, I, they, I think they each have. Some significance of some kind. At least that's what it's possible. Uh cool. Do we have a roll for your party room? Oh, um, I'll get you one. Hold on. Thanks for having me. We are in plainly special stork. That's exciting. <laughs> that's exciting. Oh, you're, you're not gonna leak me, you're gonna make me type that in. Uh, it's it's in the it's in the chat. It is? Oh, there it is. It wasn't there when you said it, sorry. <laughs> All right, I am rolling plus cha, which I am not terrible at the thing. Cha, I cha, have cha, plus cha. one. I'm gonna roll with the pips because they make me happy. All right, I have rolled. Uh, I've rolled a six, but I have a plus one in charisma, so I get a seven, which Sweet. on the heirloom means that uh, the GM will give me an impression. So I'm I'm trying to get the insight related to uh, not Prince, but Lord Caspian. You have a vision of when were you, you were young. Um, when you were young, your favorite uncle used to take you on a nighttime, some sort of nighttime expedition or exploration that you really loved. Um, I want you to, when I get back to you, I want, I want you to describe what that was. Like, give me that little story of what you and your uncle used to do at night, okay? And I'll come back and give you your answer. Uh, before I leave you, Isabella, what about you? Um, I actually like, like have a little pack, like a very subtly hewn pack that matches my, my robes. Um, and I, and I reach in there and I pull out like a couple of letters and they're letters from Logan describing his interactions with Lord Caspian Gaul. And they have subtly different information, which 
I just figured like at the time that I received the letter letters, I just figured like he he forgot that he had already written me about this experience. But the like subtly different information is like what I'm focusing on right now. And then I I like look around and yeah. like see if it, it see if either description matches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. That's probably a um I guess it's a discern realities, but it could be a spout lore. Uh what do you think? In terms probably. of like well, I, I could really go either way and be happy. Let's just have it be an int roll, custom move int roll. Just okay. And uh, I'll, the depth of information will be based off the result. So I got a seven. Okay. Um, hold that thought. I'll come back to it. Weary. You're in the sewers. Um, no one is anticipating you coming in from the sewers, and so it's probably fairly safe. Um, how are you dressed right now? What do you look like? Um, I think I'm as we, wearing... As we catch bits of light coming in from the street, right? You know, like... Yeah, I've got like a Assassin's Creed-ish uh, robe stuff going on. So my face is covered. I've got like the cowl or whatever uh, over my face. So it's just my eyes. And I've got uh, a short sword and a dueling rapier coming off my back, uh, jetting out. And I'm probably like anime running down the, the sewer, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> of course you are. Um, good, good. Uh, you get to, so there's basically, I think the kitchen has like a couple of drainage slots, right? So that like if things get spilled or whatever, it can be easily just sluiced, you know, in there. And you'll see up above like just feet, boots, you know, shoes like going across and back and back and forth and lots of chatter. Um, what are you doing right now? I think I'm looking for an isolated guard so I can interrogate them about where I might find this child. I'm assuming the child isn't at the party, because but I don't know. Got Caspian Gull is a weird one. <laughs> Maybe so you're kind of paying attention to the conversations and like traffic patterns to kind of see like who's who's where and what's going on. Yeah, I'm imagining the guards are um, wearing heavier armor. So mm -hmm. I'm tracking their movements, and as one begins to move away, I'm following it under the suit. I like that. Uh, that's pretty good. Um, I don't need a roll. That's good. You, yeah, you can kind of like, you know, I think there's like lots of little cross-cutting sections, right? And um, you'll kind of hear the guard, and you will, you'll get like within you, where the guard like stops, like where you hear his like um, his his boot his boot falls. Uh, you can tell he's like there, you know, like um, standing guard. And you may have to go a little ways away to get up into that part of the house and then sneak up on him. But otherwise, you can, you've got him isolated. I think that's, I like that. I like that enough. So let's just go with that. Um, sure. You can come up into the sort of like, it's a sort of, um, it's basically like a sort of like utility space in the, in the, in the mats. Um, just, you know, probably like where stores and things or valuables are kept and that kind of thing. And you can pop up no problem. And you can maybe even look around the corner and see that guard. What do you do now? Um, I want to try to sneak up behind him and have like slowly be drawing my short sword and then put it to his throat so I can interrogate him. Give me a defy danger with dexterity. Alrighty. Roll for your party. Um I haven't used the roll for the... Um... You just uh, type a 2 in front of 2d6 and then hit submit. What does a d6p mean? Uh, it's just with pips. It, it, either I... is fine. Uh, oh, I think I cleared uh... up my mistakes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it was a 5 and a 1. Yeah, I saw it. It was a 5 and a 1. Yeah. So that would be a 9. Okay, cool. Um, great. Uh, we'll get to that moment. And you're you're going to get there just fine. I think... Um, <laughs> you're going to sneak up behind him, no problem. Okay, that's that part's going to be easy. Uh, you'll even be able to, like, you can maybe even pretend that you have a weapon, like, drawn to his throat, but for whatever reason, your sword gets snagged in the scabbard, and, like, as soon as you get up there, it will not come out, and so you have to kind of improvise on the fly. But you're otherwise up there safely, you know, s having snuck behind him. Uh, we'll pick up that scene in a minute. I need a quick bio break, so let's just take two minutes, okay?
As soon as David gets back, we're going to pick up with your story of your uncle, <laughs> Rucker. What is um? What is Pips? Uh... Oh, Pips is like a D6 that has the little black dots on it. Oh, I've never heard of that. Pips. Yeah. Uh, the reason why uh, Shane put that in there is because um, uh, it, was, it was a specific request for me for a game. Um, what was the game? Fuck, I can't even remember. Oh, it was in a Wicked Age. I wanted to run in a Wicked Age, and I was like, hey, if we had one with Pips, that would be really helpful because you that, that game, you must have like two different types of D6s. So. Rutger, you've whispered to your sword. Um, you've seen a vision of a nighttime excursion or something with your uncle. What is it? What happened? Oh, nighttime excursion with my uncle Dalwyn, uh, who was one of my favorites. He... he strongly suspected that he should inherit the sword, but it it went to my father. He considered himself a bit of a fisherman, and he would take me as a child out into the marshy night, and we would hunt night crawlers, little worms, yeah. you know. Interesting. I, I, I mostly just squashed them uh, in my feet because it <laughs> felt amazing. Uh, but yes. That, that you have is. a vision that, that conforms to that, right? Like you're seeing that. It's almost like um, like the sword wants you to remember this, right? It wants you to remember this moment with your uncle. Um, and as you're, you're going through and, um, you know, you're having this, you're having this vision, you're collecting these night crawlers with your uncle. What was it called one? Uh, Dalwyn. Dalwyn, yeah. Your uncle Dalwyn. Um, you, there will be everything plays out like you expect it to except at the end of this vision um, you would always spend these little excursions at the end like kind of sitting on the bank of a, of a river and looking up at the stars and this is a memory you don't have one of the stars begins to glow particularly bright and its beams of light like extend um, very wide, almost like uh, it's like a starburst like sort of shape and almost like tendrils, these like these like beams of light coming off this star. And your uncle is filled with like like face blanching dread as he as he looks at this, right? Like his the color leaves his face. He feels utterly terrified and um, and clutches you. And as he clutches you, I think that's when the vision ends. Um, that's your impression. <laughs> so, and maybe you're a little shook because of that. But Isabella, you've been looking through, through Logan's notes. Logan, Logan documented going to Lord Caspian's party and hunting Lord Caspian over and over and over again. This is not the first time this has happened, right? You know this. Who knows if Rucker knows it, but you know it. And Logan attended Lord Caspian's party and was involved in killing Lord Caspian no fewer than 33 times. And every, there's a mix, okay? The key was always kept either in his trophy room in the attic or in or in a subterranean place somewhere beneath the house okay that's the that, those, that's the only like distinct pattern you've been able to you know assuming you've been like looking at these notes previously too that's the only pattern you've been able to discern in logan's notes cool and you reach the front of the line <laughs> finally <laughs> and Lord Caspian is there, Rucker, I think you're in front. And he <clears throat> he's there, very short, on his little, on his little riser. Um, and he says, Welcome, welcome to my party. My you. sir, you what a uh, you look a bit, you look a bit flushed. Are you okay? Are you feeling all right? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Uh, the the mink is rather it's warm but not the greatest smell. I thank you for inviting me to your lovely home. And what is your name, sir? I am Rutger. Rutger, what a, what a fine name, Rutger. And what a magnificent set of chain mail, Rutger. Tell me, 
What is your greatest accomplishment? Oh, my greatest accomplishment is that I wield the Twilight Reaver. Oh, it is it is an heirloom that has been passed down generation to generation between mother and, and father and son and daughter. And I am the luckiest of my generation because I get to wield it. And what fantastic feats of martial bravery have you accomplished with the Twilight Weaver? I've uh, assisted uh, a village in ridding themselves of an unwanted visitor, a, a large creature, uh, a worm. But uh, uh, there was a team. A dragon. Um, yes. Yeah, it's a, it's a dragon. How marvelous. And how convenient. And he turns and he has like a glittering black dragon mask that he pulls out of his little basket. And, and he kind of raises it up and pops it on your face, right? And Thank then you. he turns to Isabella and he says, welcome to my party, madam. What is your name? You may call me Isabella. Isabella, what a fine name. And do you have a surname, Isabella? I do not have a surname per se, but I have a moniker, a title that has been bestowed upon me by my order. Oh, really? What is that title? Uh, they call me the Virga Strider. The Virga Strider. How interesting. What does it mean? Uh, it has to do with uh, rain patterns. Have you ever noticed or witnessed when a rainfall never touches the ground? No, I can't say I have. It doesn't wane very much in Eagle's Reach. It tends to fall to the ground frozen, you know. Yes, I do know. It feels more comfortable, more like home. I have to say, Isabella Vergas, to add, the very nearness of you causes a chill to run down my spine. And she just kind of looks to the side and gives a, a sighing exhale, and you can see white fog come out of her mouth. Mm -hmm. And he he goes into his basket and he retrieves, um, I think he retrieves a mask that is like, a very like like blue jeweled, very um, stylized set of snowflakes, right? So the snowflakes obscure your face, except like there's this place for your eyes to come out, right? And he says, he, he puts it on you and says, enjoy the party and send you on your way. Weary, you've got this guard, what do you do? Your sword's not coming out as anticipated. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna use, uh my knowledge of this place instead and say um like I'll, I'll just start describing caspian and this place with such great detail that hopefully he is thrown off in such a way that he'll be wanting to listen anyway just because um it'd be like off putting me knowing all of this already mm -hmm. uh, kind of like what i did with geiska right like uh like there is a room in this place that Caspian will not let you go. We we both know that he has certain evil proclivities. Um, is such a man in this place worth your life? That kind of thing. And then all like, interesting. So you're basically like coming up behind him and saying like, I know what's going on here, and this guy's no good. And do you really want to be a part of this? Like it's a pretty bold yeah. move because he might just turn around and cut your head off, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a super bold move. Um, Defy danger, charisma. I think. Okay. We can play. We can play the scene out if you want. But I think I got the gist of it. Yeah, I think that's. Yeah. yeah. So two, I have. So that is a ten. Awesome. Um, I guess we have to name this guy now, don't we? Um, we will name him. Hmm, it's a good name, uh, Edric. Your approach, like you, you say all that, or you, you kind of like you know, just give me the basics, the basic argument that I'll require. Um, yeah, Caspian is known to be an evil man, and he will get what is coming to him. Uh, you and yours need not be mistreated anymore. All I need to know is where he does not let the servants and the guards go, and then you shall go free as well. And he says, 
he, behind his fish mask. I don't know who you are, but the words you speak have a truth to them. If I'm being perfectly honest, I don't even know how I came to work at this place. I just found myself here one day working his parties, guarding things, protecting things, sometimes things that don't even make any sense. None of this makes any sense. This place makes no sense. I don't know of this place you speak of, but I do know that he engages in some very, very strange behaviors. And he says, I am often required to go up to his trophy room with two meals. And yet I do not know who the second meal is for because there's no one with him when I drop the meals off. And then he kind of like says, if you learn what the truth of this place is, please, please don't tell me. And then he just kind of like, like goes back to, he just kind of gushes, like shoes you away, right? Um. Or maybe when he says that, he looks behind him and I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> I like that too. <laughs> good, good. Weary, whispering in the dark, um, whispering voices. It's good. Isabella and Rutger, the main ballroom, the, this party painting the scene. There are two kind of like major features here incredible decadence. Um, he goes all out for these parties, like like jaw dropping opulence and decadence, right? Um, I would even go so far as to say, like economically unfeasible, right? Incredible decadence at these parties. But also, there are signs here and there, sometimes subtle, sometimes not so subtle, that this mansion was constructed for an uncommonly short person. Okay, something in the architecture, something in the, you know, in the way it's laid out or whatever. As you guys move through, I want to know what you see that is that that just exemplifies how decadent this party is, and also what you see that is an indication of just how short Lord Caspian is. Whoever wants to go first. Why don't you take it first, Isabella, since you've had this before? So <clears throat> There is a large population of his servants that are children um, because they are shorter than he is. And if they like a lot, and you see a lot of them like hunching over because if they are ever like noticed to be like have grown taller than, than him, he, they, he dismisses them. So they're just like children like skulking about and for the opulence and like talk about not economically like feasible, like, they these children are running around with little like suckling pigs that are roasted like so they're you know sm small small pigs but like each guest gets their own it's <laughs> just it's their own suckling pig okay i love it <laughs> rugger might take two right um <laughs> rugger very short person lives here and how decadent is this place what do you say uh, the far wall where there are a number of, of books and shelves, uh, it, it's made almost as if it's terraced. They're, they're, they're not a ladder because that would take effort, uh, but just a gentle riser set of steps that are the entire wall. It's just the, the whole thing is made so that the books are eye level for normal people, but he could walk up and procure <laughs> nice. one. Good, good, good. Tell me about the decadence of this place. The decadence, there is a long table like you would find at a banquet hall. It reaches perhaps 40, 50 feet long. And there is an ice sculpture that runs the length of the entire table. It's a it's a gaggle of children chasing a pig. <laughs> nice. <laughs> the dude who will be turned into suckling pigs at some point, I assume. They're very fast, those people. <laughs> Good. Um... What's your guys' next step? I mean, you're there in the party. There's people milling around. Um, you have some information, right? As far as like, you know that like the key is usually kept in either the trophy room, somewhere beneath the house or in the attic. Um, and that's interesting. 
Yeah. Um, What's your next move? Um, like I, 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 I decline my suckling pig. Rector can have mine if he wants it, but I take it. <laughs> yeah, and I and I grab a couple of mugs. I'm like hand one to to Rector, and I'm like, well, if uh, if time serves true, and 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 I think that it will, we should be on the lookout for a sneaky thief. I have it here in Logan's letters. He always was accompanied by this weary fellow. Mm, good. If he's tired. How good of a thief can he be? He's not. It's his name. It's his name, <laughs> Rutger. You should ask him why he's called Weary. It's a great. Okay. Hmm. I have many explanations for why he's called Weary in these pages, and none of, none of them seem to be the same. Is it possible this might be Weary when you like meet up with the group? Like maybe they see you like roaming around somewhere. Uh, yeah, I could be like. Um, I could maybe I've used my move for disguise to have my own mask and it mm -hmm. I like the idea of the mask being uh, I can't remember exactly what it is but it was Christo's characters the symbol for his Templar and the church was like that eclipse oh, that stylized sort of eclipse moon and sun thing. yeah and I think like as a throwback to that I have a mask that is like mm -hmm. that but I can you know see through it obviously <laughs> and, uh, or something part of it. yeah and then uh, my robes are covered by like a um like a party goer's robes instead, not not thiefy ones. <laughs> well, where do we see you skulking about? Like, <laughs> uh, probably just in the the main room where they are at as well. While I try to like perhaps navigate to where the guard was telling me to go. I think you have something on your person that is a that's a tell that you were friends with Logan. Maybe something you kept on your person that's like a like a memento of some sort that Isabella would recognize. Does that sound cool? Mm hmm. Um, I'm trying to remember. I like the idea of maybe having, like, since Weary was in, in the same place when Logan, uh, as where Logan died, maybe Logan was able to nab something from him when he was falling before he, like, made his way out of that place. But I can't remember what Logan had on him that would... Well, that. Isabel, I'll leave it to you. Do you think there's something that Weary would have from Logan that you'd recognize? Like, oh, like even with his mask, you'll know that's Weary, or you'll know that's somebody who knew Logan, right? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know what like they ended up doing with his robes, but I would imagine Weary might be interested in having like a section that's of those boar quills, um, and maybe mm. like I just see some of that like sticking out from underneath mm. um, your clothes. Where it's like you have you have like a strip of, of one of those. Mm, yeah, that's good. Can we have that scene? Are you like approach weary and maybe, or do, or do you want to leave it for now? I can have that scene. That's fine with me. Are you cool with that weary? Or can we bring mm -hmm. that? Right, yeah, that for up. sure. Go for it. No, I, I, I spot him from across the room. Speak of the tragedy, and he shall befall you. <laughs> nice. um, oh, also. I was thinking uh, for the for I haven't said the decadence and the the thing yet for the party. Oh yeah, sure. I, yeah. What do you got? I, yeah. I was thinking there's like red velvet curtains falling everywhere and nobody knows what they're there for except then like the aerial dancers come out and use them. Like, have you ever seen? The, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's got aerial dancers, yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. that's pretty decadent. Yeah, in this and setting then, especially, right? Uh, you can tell that he is short because the curtains drape very low so that he can like actually reach out and like touch them when they're like on their various crescendo down because <laughs> he's a creepy dude i love it um <laughs> well so let's have that scene for just real quickly just just kind of like isabella right <sighs> um and like i'm like i'm like holding this mug i'm like ugh, not as good as frosted ale and i'm like weary uh, I think Weary starts, but not visibly, because like he also can't ever be <laughs> surprised. <laughs> but this would surprise him if he could be surprised. <laughs> and um, I think he has like a searching eyes type moment on you, where he tries to place you, because there's like a familiarity that he can't place. Yeah, and I'm just like disregarding it. I'm just like weary. This is Rutger. He's new. Uh, 
So what's the, what's the deal? Have you found it yet? Um, this is highly <laughs> irregular. <laughs> um, I I will surmise that you both are here to hunt. Of course we are, Weary. Why else would we be here? It's nice to meet he, you, Weary. Uh, you as well, Rutger. Uh, we, uh, I have spoken to a guard, and he has said that in the trophy room there are two meals that come, uh, and he does not know who the other one is for. It, I surmise that the child might be there. Yes, this sounds like th that's probably the place. Well, how do you want to? How do how do the three of you want to tackle it? Perhaps weary you you do the whole. The whole business in Rutger and I will hang back and just drink. This isn't as good as Frosted Ale, but it will do. Would you like a, uh, a suckling pig? I have an extra. Uh, where I'm going, I think I will need no pigs. <laughs> well, you look a little tired. <laughs> Through my mask? Um, no. I, grow, I grow tired of this whole establishment, trust me. <laughs> we were, um, <laughs> You, since you, per your thief move, you cannot be surprised. Um, I think you're going to notice, uh, I'm, I'm interpreting that as meaning you always like, have an eye out for things, right? Yeah. You're going to see a guest kind of, they're kind of like making a circle around the perimeter of the ballroom, right? Keeping an eye on things, not really communicating with anyone, not chit-chatting, not gossiping. They're wearing a, um, it's a long, cloak that just drapes down and kind of cover, obscures their arms and legs and body, just kind of like a bell-shaped black cloak. And the mask they're wearing, if you guys go take a look at the image board, oh. uh, which is in the folder, you'll see the mask. But basically the mask looks like a round mirror with this like, this like, er, these like radiating like metal, like starburst tines coming off of it, right? Oh. And um, it's ironic since I'm an eclipse. <laughs> so you see this this person wearing this like mirrored starburst mask. Um, it's 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 eerie, right? Like, can they see behind that thing? They must be able to. Um, and also, like, you know, it's kind of reflecting like whatever it, it's looking at, you know. Uh, but you see them. What are you doing? Um, I think like as we're talking, you we see weary looking somewhat um it appears at first he looks at disinterested in the conversation with you two but then as the camera pans around we see that he's actually been clocking this person that's moving around and as the conversation concludes he nods to the person um making their way around and says that it appears we have um, a visitor we have to deal with first before we make our move to the trophy room. Also, does this count as making a plan to mm, steal I something? think, yeah, possibly. Um, I mean... We're, we're planning on stealing the life of the child. <laughs> yeah, well, before we, we'll, we'll settle that in a minute. I mean, yeah. uh, I want to I stick to this scene that we're in, like right here at this moment. Um, Russia, sure. when you see this, this person uh, ominously circling around the room wearing this like mirrored starburst mask what do you think what do you do that's kind of weird maybe he's evil he's not attacking anyone or hurting anyone right nope just keeping an eye on things clearly keeping an eye on things man right? okay mm -hmm. there are take him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there are uh there are people often set against us that are also a member of the church called the Phantom Court. Perhaps the person there, as I nod, uh, is one of them. Or perhaps uh, uh, the Lord gave him a really kooky mask. We should, we should be wary, but no, there's no open <laughs> fight yet. I am. I'm always weary. <laughs> no, you're always weary. You're weary. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Those are two different words. <laughs> yeah, but it's funny. I had to. It's, it's something. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, all right. So, you're aware of, of that. Uh, but otherwise, like everything is 
everything's cool, right? Like parties going on, uh, lots of mm -hmm. people chit chatting, talking. Um, the the main Drunk. ballroom has like a you know as kind of described there like you know. Um, well, the main ballroom has like, you know, sets of like big flights of steps that go up to the second story, right? <clears throat> um, accessing different wings, allow you to access different wings of the house. Um, it sounds like you guys are looking at the trophy room as a possible thing here. Uh, that conforms to to Logan's notes as well as what you learned from this guard, right? Um, what's, what's your plan? What are you guys going to do? Uh, maybe if you guys want... Um... I could draw this person out by making an attempt at the the room, like going up the steps, and then if they follow me, then they will be unawares to you guys being behind and flanking them. Although you are, a, according to my friend Isabella here, a great thief, perhaps I should be looking for a, a restroom or a bathroom or a, a more suckling pig. And uh, but the. You. I'm going for the the flag. Send me into danger. <laughs> <laughs> Except you just volunteered yourself for danger. <laughs> well, they had to send me. Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> we'll keep the like, going. I think Rutgers' plan is cool. I'm like I'm like waving off like a child because you said suckling pig and he came running. And I'm like no, no, <laughs> no. <right now>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to sit here and get drunk until Lord Caspian ends is done with his line and he could come inside. Oh, well, that that sounds like a much better plan, Weary. And uh, if if Weary goes up the stairs and somebody follows him, sure, Rutger can um, you can handle it, right? Or or, you, or we could both continue to get drunk and see if Weary lives up to his name. No, that doesn't quite work. <laughs> yeah, maybe you should. Ease up on the drinking a little bit, and then I'll go <laughs> up the stairs. <laughs> Ease up on the drinking, friend. <laughs> this, is, this is, looks like it's getting a little warm. A very <laughs> short, a very short fish mask servant like comes by at that moment with like a tray of wine glasses, right, filled with filled with with delicious red red liquid. Um, so we have. We don't have a plan yet. What's, what's next? I'm just going to ask around the table. Weary, what's your next move? What do you do? Oh, yeah. We're just camera freaked out. Um, banged on the table and it went out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, know, I, I broke it. Yeah. Rutger, your strength knows no bounds. Um. Yeah, I saw that. That was funny. Um, yeah, I'll say, you know, I'll make my way to the trophy room. You two back me up should I need it. And. Um, if I need help, I will signal for it in such a way that you'll you'll know. Like, we'll listen for the scream. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, do you want to go without being noticed, or are you going to try to draw that sentry person? Yeah, I w I want to go up in such a way that when they are circling me, I I am in their line of sight, but otherwise, I'm nondescript to everybody else, if okay. possible. So you want to just draw them and maybe no one. Only them, yeah. I like that. That's pretty good. Uh, we'll give Richard a second to come back. I need a bio break anyway, so we'll come back in a minute. Okay. Cool.
All right, so your plan, Weary, is to is to try to like sneak off so that you only draw that sentry person's uh, starburst mask. Uh, yeah. Their attention. That's good. Uh, to fight your dexterity. Okay. Let's see. Oh, I I got box cards. So. Nice. Very, um, uh, Seventeen. <laughs> give me the scene. Like, just what does it look like? Or no, fifteen, not seventeen. Um, I think, it, like, there is a, like a typical like, milling party scene going on and then the camera kind of locks on the that person's mask and then my mask and there's like a the room kind of got goes completely silent mm -hmm. as like our two masks uh eye gaze meet and then weary sort of like nonchalantly turns around and, and makes his way up the stairs and there's a shot of like everybody in the party just still having fun and only that person uh, the mask like moves to track weary perhaps right yeah and they they and and isabella and rutger you'll see that person kind of break off from the party and go up the stairs uh shortly after weary goes up right um not so not so quickly that weary might like turn and see this person but but definitely like following weary mm -hmm. isabella, i think there's like, it's like a challenge kind of i think yeah i'm just like well we already got what he was after, so hopefully that goes well for him. If we hear screams, you respond first, Rutger. And I'm just like over by this massive train of ice with the, 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 the pigs at the front and the children at the back. <laughs> and like behind them, I'm like, like I'm, I'm into my cups a little bit and I start like making a little sculpture, you know, using my ice magic. I'm making a little sculpture of I'm like using my wine to make a red figure, and it's like <laughs> it's 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 like a thin willowy woman with a pig mask and a big knife that's like chasing the children who's chasing the pigs. <laughs> okay, I love it. Um, just a bit of color. You're gonna try to accomplish something here in terms of like. What, I'm what hitting. Might you I'm hit trying to hit my alignment. <laughs> I mean, I'm into it. Uh, I mean, the um, Rucker. What are you doing during this little display? I've finished my. Pigs and uh, I, I'm drinking. I thought we were going to get rowdy, and uh, this is not exactly the kind of rowdy that I signed up for. Uh, I, see, I see that you're like not into it. I'm like, all right. So, what do you want to do, big man? We were supposed to drink and and take some attention from the others. Perhaps we start a drinking game. <sighs> what manner of drinking game did you have in mind? Like the one where we just get so blackout drunk that we don't remember what happened tomorrow. <laughs> Love that game. <laughs> no, because we're on a job. But uh, later, we could get drunk without getting so blackout drunk. There's there are there are several levels. There's actually uh, a small community that believes there are seventeen levels of drunkenness, and I think we can go for number four. I'll show you. Come, 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 sit. 17 uh, levels of drunkenness and she'll she'll sit down and like somebody brings over like another tray and i'll grab one and like pull it off and then like dismiss them but they don't move quick enough so i just like clench my fist and all their glasses burst open as the the drinks freeze we were going to drink those isabella we've got we've got one each we'll start with that one start yes we will start we'll start and uh rucker will he he takes the mug in his hand and he holds it up and he starts to like bellow out a rowdy song and he doesn't care if anybody knows the words to it because it's really repetitive uh, and by the third verse either people are singing along or uh, asking him to leave usually uh, so that's his plan is he's going to try I love to get it. it's good yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know what? Let's let's make this uh, roll plus charisma. I think the stakes here are that like high on the roll, you're going to get like um, major distraction, and maybe even draw out Lord Caspian, right? Like to where he like is into what you guys are into, right? Um, or, or or just you know you you have kind of control of the scene basically. Uh, I'm not sure what the the negative stakes are except just you know regular GM move. But give me a charisma roll. I want to see how this goes. All right, charisma again plus one. And uh, that would be an eight. Nice. Uh, I was gonna get. I'd, I'd say aid from Isabella, but we don't need it mechanically. But in the fiction, um, what does this look like? Like, just give me the full scene here. 
Ah, uh, I, th I think what Rutgers' song is like is that it, it lists off some names of people of note, uh, usually officials, and then some of the things that they've done while drunk. And uh, there's this weak rhyming scheme. There's generally a couplet. Uh, so it's it's kind of like this screed in a way about uh, people who have too much power and how they waste and abuse it. Uh, all because of the sauce. And it's easy to pick up because while there are a couple of new names that, that pop in every verse, there's this huge refrain that is that is whimsical. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just hard to, to not sing along. And I imagine that they're, because this is a decadent party, perhaps they're like a small string quartet and they start to, because Rucker's just going to keep going, they just play along uh, with the, the beat and they start to keep time and, and play music along with it uh it's Isabella, how are you, yeah it's good Isabel, how are you participating i love that um like i'm like laughing really hard at it because it's pretty good and like the great thing about this song is there's always a verse that somebody else knows that that you haven't heard yet so i've just like started clapping and then like i i sang a verse and then like i just like grabbed somebody and just like pulled them over and like after the after the refrain like insisted that they sing a verse um and like through by that we've gotten like more people involved and it's become like kind of the thing at the party right now instead of it being like really you know obnoxious yeah yeah yeah. maybe even people are taking their masks off and stuff like really getting into it yeah i think uh, we even noticed some of those like people we have sung about <laughs> have taken their masks <laughs> off for your for your for the role result i'll let you each declare something true about the scene um uh, declare truth about the scene something that you, you have complete complete authority here something that changes the nature of the party or it helps you in some way, whatever you want. You can think about it for a sec, if you, if you need it. That's cool. Weary, you are up topside. Um, and if declaring your truth, those of you who are downstairs at the party, it would help Weary, you can do it then too. So, um, Weary, you are up there, it's pretty, it's pretty quiet up there. There's probably a patrol, but like you're pretty good at like getting past patrols, right? So that's no big deal. Um, you know where the trophy room is. You've probably been there a bunch. <laughs> yeah. You're there. There's two beautiful lacquered wooden doors. The doors are carved with images of butterflies and centipedes and caterpillars and beetles, right? On the doors. What do you do? Um, I want to, I'm still trying to think it through, but essentially my plan is to make it seem as though I've entered the room uh, and have them open it for me and me be behind them setting a, a trap for them basically. Oh, that's super clever. Um, I like that. So you want them to like say, oh, he must've went in here and then you go in and got it. Yeah. Hmm. Assuming that this person, you know, can gain access to it uh, so that I, I can avoid a trap or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. So you got a mid result on your defy danger. So I think, um, I think that's going to be. I think basically, oh. I'm going to just, I'm just going to kind of make you roll again on this, right? Um, I got. Describe I got, your plan. Did you I get got box cars on. Oh, listen, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, so I like that. Then I think that's great. Um, just give it the scene. Like, what does it look like when you convince this person to go in? Um, I think I slowly go up the stairs as the uh, the party starts bumping. I guess. <laughs> And um, as I am just out of reach or sort of out of sight of the person following me, I quicken my pace and I go to the door and I think, um, I'm not sure visually how I would cue that I would be at that door. Perhaps there is something blocking or close to the uh, door, like maybe there's two statues or something like that. And I shift one aside or something like that to make it seem as though this is clearly where I'm going. And then I uh, place myself in a vantage point where I can watch the, the door and have them come to it and enter. Well, so let's roll forward with that. I mean, you the person comes up there, you, you hide or whatever around the corner. They come up and they see the statue's been moved. And um, just as a matter of like, you know, kind of... Um, just due diligence, I suppose. They pull out like a key ring um, and undo the door and go inside. What do you do? Um, I, I want to slowly sneak uh, behind them. And as soon as they enter the door, I want to have pressed my 
my blade against their back, which apparently is becoming my signature move. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can make sure, and you can make sure your sword your sword works properly this time too, right? Get the <laughs> yeah. Snag out of your scabbard. Um, good. It can be defined to find your dexterity, okay. unless you intend to stab them, in which case I think that's backstab. But... Uh, no, because I think there's still a curiosity there as to who this person is, because mm -hmm. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, sure. So I'll clear it. Submit. Oh shoot! I did the pips, but I, I guess it doesn't matter, right? Um, so nine uh, is twelve. Nice. Um, it goes exactly as you wish. Uh, you're right behind them. You've got the dagger up to their to their back. Um, you can feel their body like seize up a little bit with recognition, right? Like there's a that's a distinct feeling, right? Like when a when a when a when a tip of a sharp tip of metal like pokes in your back, right? You you there's a seize up. Um, you've got them. I'm going to cut away. What are my truths about the party? One from each. Truth about the party is that while there are, was always a creeping sense of, of dread that was an undercurrent amid the... Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a reason that this party is so uh, opulent is that, that people will drive themselves to excess mm. uh, because the, the dread that's underneath, they're trying to hide from that. And Ooh, yeah. uh, the song, the truths that come forward are that by just the general lampooning of people of power, it seems to suck a bit of the air of the danger, the feeling of danger. I mean, perhaps it makes them a little more carefree, but also careless. So there, there is, of course, more danger that could happen from it. But at least people are maybe telling a few more truths to each other. And um, you guys kind of have the run of the place now, too, right? In a way. Yeah. Right? That's good. Yeah. What, about, what about you, Isabel? What truth? <clears throat> um, so, the, yeah, we've kind of got this song that's like kind of almost taken on a life of its own now. Um, I think that my truth will be that this the song has taken on a life of its own, so no one will notice if we if we are no longer there. Uh, so you can just slip in and out as you wish. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I like that. At a certain point, you know, um, Lord Caspian will come find the two of you. And he will, uh, maybe you're at a, maybe this is at a certain point, like when you know, everything's going on, everything's going like really rowdy and crazy, you know, and, and Lord Caspian, you know, Lord Caspian's had a fair amount to drink uh, already and he'll kind of like stumble over to you, right? Um, on his, on his ridiculously short little legs and uh, come up to your table and, and he kind of slams his hands on the table. Uh, knocks the video camera out and then gets up <laughs> and then sits down and says, well, it seems like the two of you really know how to throw a party. Are you level four drunk yet? <laughs> he says, um, <laughs> I'm not making any more bad D&D jokes. I was going to say he's like multi-class drunk. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he, he says, he says, what do the two of you think about getting involved in the wheel party after this is all over, huh? I like the fake party, so I'm sure the real party will be even more interesting. The real party is a little bit more intimate. The real party is a little bit more delectable, a little bit more naughty, if you know what I mean. A sex party, I see. Yes, I was about to say sexual in nature, but I think you have discerned it accurately, Watka. What do you say? I don't know, Isabella. <laughs> do, you, do you have anything else you need to do? Uh, I need I need to be like level seven drunk before I'll be ready for that. You What's froze up? have the drinks over there. <clears throat> What um? What kind of mask does he have? He does not wear one. He doesn't have a mask. Okay. No. <laughs> he's he's very drunk. He's actually pretty drunk already, right? I can't imagine him being any good at the real party, right? Um, but he definitely likes to have the real party, right? You know, I think there's even like a bit of like because people are chattering and talking, right? Like one of the things that Lord Caspian does at this party is he's not very good at like scoring usually, even though he's very rich, and um. 
and he likes to like have these parties to get people like you know he he wants to eventually like transition to like the you know to an orgy or whatever it just never quite works out like it's always kind of like a joke right um and and he's you know there's a sadness to it right like and i think that probably kind of keying up on what on Rucker said like this the, the party is an attempt to sort of like squelch his basic sadness right his basic like you know not so much dread for him as much as just like you know, it's a constant, a constant uh, compensation, right? And he even starts to like fall asleep a little bit while he's like talking about the various like, you know, titillating delights. And then he just kind of like falls asleep with his face on his chest. <clears throat> well, I better take him to his room. And I like try and like tip a wink to Rutger, like I'm gonna go kill this guy. <laughs> Rutger. Feels, like feels like a flag moment to me. <laughs> I will pick him up into my arms and carry him away towards where where the child put down the pig. Where is where's the master's room? And the kid just like belts out a verse of the song because they because 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 or the chorus because the chorus has been sung like eighteen times at this point, and and he just points in one direction, right? And <laughs> let's, let's let you lead you let let you go there. Pat him on his little head. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Weary, you've got the sword tip on this person's back. What do you do? Um, I say you are clever, but I'm clever still. Reveal yourself, masked person. It's a woman. She says. And yet I don't have to reveal myself, do I? You know who I am and you know whom I serve. Do I? <laughs> she seems to think you do. Um, I'm afraid I'll need your words anyway, madame. She reaches up and pulls a little bit of the high collar of her cloak down and you see the Phantom Court brand on her neck. Oh, right? I knew it. Yeah, the Phantom Court brand. We never really said what it looks like. It's just sort of a strange kind of like. In my head, it's always been like an Omega symbol or something. I think that's right. Yeah, you know, kind of yeah. abstract, sort of like yeah, you know, Omega, and she's clearly Phantom Court, right? And Phantom Court has is, is kind of in opposition to Shadow Court, you know, and on, on the edges. Although the, both, the motivations of both sex are totally unclear. Um, what do you do? Why should I not spill your blood right here and now? And she turns and as she turns like she has that mirror right she's wearing this starburst mirror mask right um, she turns you still have that you still have the you know the, the jump on her right that's not a big deal she has no weapon but she turns and in the mirror glass um you see your true bone man face right like maybe like you know maybe maybe like wherever it peeks out of the mask that you're wearing you can see like that sort of that gelatinous, that clear gelatinous flesh and like your jawbone, right? Or your teeth, right? Um, and she says, she says, you can kill me. It doesn't matter because you'll be back and I'll be back and we'll do this over and over again. Well, this isn't a pleasant fiction at all, is it? <laughs> she says, if you wish to strike me down like a coward, then do it. But if you wish to engage me like a man that allow me to draw my weapon and we shall have at each other. If we are to do this over and over again, why would I waste my time in mortal combat with you? Perhaps you shall learn something. <laughs> that is enticing actually. <laughs> um... Well, what does this room look like, this trophy room? Yeah, good question. It's a trophy room, but not not like big game trophies. It's it's numerous, like all over on little pedestals and things, numerous little glass domes of insects, like perfectly preserved, like it preserved and like kind of positioned, right? Like with pins and things, big long fat centipedes, uh, butterflies, that kind of thing, right? Um, I think up suspended in the air on wires are like larger insect specimens, right? It's like you're in this like insect trophy room, right? Just crawling with insects. Interesting. Um, yeah. 
And that's what you see at a glance anyway. Okay. Um, I think Weary says, uh, during this dance, you will speak of the Phantom Court to me, or you'll forfeit your li life right now. Mm, good. I like that. She says, very well. And she kind of takes like two or three steps back, dueling distance, and uh, pulls out like a, she pulls out like a sort of a, like a, it's like a dark, like a long pointed dagger, right? She kind of pulls that out of her cloak, right? Not quite a short sword, but longer than a dagger. Mm -hmm. And she says, let us begin. And then in her style, uh, she creates about a dozen images of herself, like oh, just yeah. up here, just like a room full of like, of her, right? Um, in different positions, different stances. And, uh, and it will start. Let's get a roll on the table. What do you do? Um, I'm picturing this as a trap. Maybe I try to disarm the trap. I'm into that. Uh, I think um, I'm into that. I think if nothing else, it's um, it's a discern realities of nothing else. I think, and I'll, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll angle the answers toward like you figuring out the truth of where she is and how to stop her her, her magic here. Okay, and that's uh, whiz. Whiz, yeah. Okay. Which I hate calling whiz, but whatever. Yeah. It always sounds <laughs> it always sounds stupid, whatever the one. Yeah. I've like taken to stir. calling it I've been I've taken to calling it wise. Why not just oh. wisdom? <laughs> yeah. That's the well, big because number. that's the stat, yeah, exactly. You can't yeah, do that. I guess yeah, I'm a kind of a one, but <laughs> Oh yeah. Uh, in true fashion I get a three. <laughs> okay, awesome. We'll get to that in a minute. Um Rucker, you take Lord Caspian um, drunk, <laughs> passed out in your arms. Um, you carry him to this, maybe there's like a little like sort of salon or drawing room or something nearby. Um, the guards are like, they just give you easy access, right? They'll, you've earned that from your party. You just kind of like walk in. Uh, what do you do? Look for his tiny little bed. <laughs> right yeah yeah that's good oh you're taking him to his room okay good that's fine too um yeah there's a yeah he's got like a um, it could be a divan i mean it could be a divan in the drawing room that, that's it's fine. it's a it's a particularly enormous bed actually <laughs> um it's like very, I'll, very I'll, I'll make it that much more lonely <laughs> <laughs> indeed yeah um uh but and with a little stair step that goes up to it right uh but you're there yeah isabella poor little thing no one truly loves him and i'm like pulling back my sleeves and like frost starts like creeping down my fingertips i'm like what what are you talking about rutger we are here for the key we're here to kill him we're also here for the key what if what if perhaps we give him some mercy we take the key from him he's no longer a danger look he sits up here and throws parties who is he harming it's not, it's not why we're here. We're here not to judge him. We're here just to kill him. Why? What has he done? That's the $100,000 question, right? Look, if you don't have the stomach for this, go help Weary collect the, the key. I just don't understand why he needs to die. I'll step um, in and say, for purposes of the flag, I think you've hit it, Isabella. Just FYI. Yeah. Um, like that's that was the deal, and well, perhaps he doesn't have to die, but I need to get some information from him, nevertheless. That. Can I, can I make a suggestion as well? Is if you've read all of Logan's things, and you must know a whole bunch of terrible things about Caspian too that might incite Rutger to be okay with his death. Right. Yeah. I mean, the one, the one thing that will stick out is um, one time when 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 Logan went through this. Uh, you'll recall there was. Um, uh, Caspian had that strange artifact that was like a cube that basically like eviscerated people, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Just as a, you know, you could probably come up with your own horrors, right? <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, he he yeah he he destroys human beings as part of his his parties. There's no re re redeeming qualities of this man. Small though he may be, childlike though he may be, he's not innocent. How do you know this? Like I'll, like fumble through. I saw through. you reading earlier. Yeah, like fumble through my stuff, and I'm like these these letters, these letters from Logan. He's been here before. Logan, Who, who's Logan? You, uh, never mind about Logan. He a relative? Not exactly. A lover? Look, I'm interrogating this little man. You can be here or not. Interrogation, I have no problem with. He might end up dead. Yeah. Let me see the letters. Show me. What has he done? They're my personal correspondence. I'm I not understand. Going to share them. I understand. But we're talking about a man's life here. He has an entire retinue. What will happen to them? I would at least like to know what has been shared with you so that I can have this no longer rest on my conscience. Isabella, please. I've told you he just, he, he'll, tor he'll torment and torture people in, to death just for amusement's sake. That was one of the horrors that Logan had to put it into to la uh, one of the times that he was at one of these parties. Uh, I'm, I'm confused. One of the times that he was at these parties, he put an end to it, but there was no end. Well, it's very... Look, it's not entirely clear what's going on with these, these letters. It seems Logan's been to a number of these, but... <sighs> child who repeats the numbers and there's some kind of repetition of this party it's just... get get your answers get your answers but i i agree it's your friend logan um is important to you very good um i assume you're going to hang around while isabella gets her answers rucker doesn't sound like your jam oh this hurts but i he isn't innocent. I trust Isabella. <laughs> Good. Um, where do you go then? I'll probably go right outside and chat with the guards Indeed. in case there's a scream that happens and you know I need to stop them from going um, in. One thing you're gonna, you, you, I think, like the, 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 where 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 his bedroom is is puts you at an angle to where you can kind of see up to the trophy room and you will see. The distinct like movement, the distinct glint of swords and blades, and and the sound of clashing steel. <laughs> like you're gonna witness that right up there. Speaking of which, Weary, um, you, she's very good. She's got her illusions. Major advantage, right? You are, you are, you are dipping in. You're swinging your sword. Um, uh, you 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 go through an illusion and there's nothing and she just kind of laughs and eventually one of the, uh, her the, the deadly one uh, gets close to you and makes her strike uh, she's very strong she's a d10 plus five Let's see no piercing though you still get your armor oh nice I rolled a two so seven minus one is six. Okay, not too bad. She goes in. Uh, she she jams the sword like in I think like in the like in a in a, in like in the thick meaty part of your arm. You know, she like kind of sticks it in, and you kind of cry out. And and she says a truth. She like sticks it in you, right? She says a truth. We are all trapped here, Lord Caspian, myself, you, your companions, and we have been for many many years. And then. She kind of pulls the knife out, a spray of blood. She goes, do you yield? Not until I get the truth of the Phantom Court. What do you do? Um, I think, like, he, he's wounded and kneeling, and mm -hmm. I imagine those illusions, like, all around him in a, in a circle. Right. And I think he, like, sheaths his sword, anime style, so, like, Kenshin-ish. Um, and he's listening for uh, the movements of her feet, and assuming that the illusions wouldn't be making sound. Um, yeah, I'll give you a hack and slash if you intend to strike. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Go for it. Which no, is kind of strength, right? Uh, strength, yeah. Okay. Oh, I should clear that. 
Oh, nice. Uh, I got 11. Nice. Uh, you still have a read on the real her. Um, what do you do? Um, I think I faint as if I'm going for one of them. But then as I'm about to make like a samurai thrust at it, I instead point it behind me as she's coming at me and I dig into her side maybe and clip her. Nice. Roll your damage. Which is a D8, it looks like. She has 12 hit points and no armor. Um, so depending on what you get, you might want to take the extra D6 too. Okay. So I got two damage. Okay. And... I think that's it, right? I just roll a D8. Yeah, if you expose yourself to her strike, you get an extra D6, but it won't be enough to kill her, so you might want to hold that, um, because she's pretty strong, or <laughs> she does a lot of damage. Sure, yeah, and I, I kind of like that anyway. Like, he is sort of proving that she doesn't have the upper hand, as she thinks, and maybe he allowed for that strike only to get a truth in the beginning anyway, so maybe mm. it kind of D, um, like, messes with her a little bit, and taunts her out or teases out more of, about the actual phantom core which is what he's after not like these placating truths about us being stuck in a vault he already knows that right 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 uh she like she kind of falls back as you hit her and she's like and she kind of like kind of grit you can hear her you know kind of like like snarling beneath her or behind her mask a little bit as because you hit her and she's like a truth the shadow court and the phantom court have been doing battle with one another for millennia Rutger, you see the glint, you see the clash of steel, you see the, the commotion. Everybody, you've got full reign here because the, the party is, is is booming and everything's going crazy. You can move around freely. What do you do? Oh, well, I'll just head, head that way, walking at a quick pace, but not running and not trying to attract attention. I don't want the guards to come running. Uh, but evidently, our weary friend is in need of some aid. So I'll... Yeah, you're gonna see all of these like illusion versions of this of this person with the starburst mask, like um, like kind of moving around, swirling around the room. Uh, it's kind of a chaotic scene, and you see Weary kind of in the middle of them, almost like in a in a you know in the middle of like a, a you know in the middle of like a funnel storm of black cloaks and starburst masks and blades. Right? Um, um, what do you do? I'll do. You, do I'll take out some of these. He draws, <laughs> draws Twilight Reaver and start okay. hacking up some of these mirrored things. He has he has heard of this spell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, as you like strike through the illusions, they will dissipate. Give me a um, give me a defy danger with wisdom uh, to kind of like peel through the to peel through the the illusions and kind of create some equal footing here. I've rolled an eleven, which nice. is great because my wisdom is a uh, is, is, is zero. So you're going to put you and Weary at a distinct advantage against her by by eliminating the illusions. What does it look like? Uh, I, I think he just swings his sword around with very precise strikes, slicing through the back of these apparitions, um, winnowing out down until there are just maybe a few that face Weary. None have seemed to face him. Hmm. Uh, good. And she kind of like, uh, she's there. She's got her, 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 her dirk drawn and like, you know, the two of you are kind of there. Like you're kind of like it's a little three-way, you're really two on one kind of face-off situation, right? Um, you guys are probably smashed up, smashed up a couple of the bug trophies. <laughs> you know, we're kind of like smashed on the ground. That kind of thing is going on. And she kind of like, she kind of like looks out and she kind of looks at you Rutger and you, well, you can't really tell what she's looking at, but you just feel it. And she says, a truth, your uncle Dolwyn was a victim of our court. And then she just like rushes at you. I think, she, I think she's trying to get your, get your anger up a little bit. Well, what do you do? Do, do you want her dead? <laughs> um, she knows things that we need or want to know. But as to her life, you hold it in your hands. You have you do what you want with it. 
I hope you're saying this quickly. She's like ready to boot blades. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'll, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll say do what you want. I guess. <laughs> um, Phantom Court. They're 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 uh, they're an order of assassins. So I don't whether she might be lying about Dolan. Who even knows how she knows about Dolan? But um, but she's she's coming at you. What do you do? I'll, I'll strike her down. Hack and slash. Okay. Do do. So one of the things you can do, Frazier, is you can actually select two dice and then click reroll selected so you don't have to worry about clearing and, and doing all that stuff. Oh. And they can roll a shitty four. Um, <laughs> Great. With a plus two, that gets me right up to a six. You want to try to aid, Mary? Yeah. Um, yes, I, I guess I'll roll first before giving fiction in case it's... Uh, well, well we, we, we have to figure out what stat you're using, so just tell me how you're... Like, oh, generally, um, roughly. Maybe could my aid have been the blow that I already dealt her, so she's weakened? Like she's got that blood. It's she's easier to. Yeah, that's a little too abstract. I'll give you some more. He's in a he's in a fighting stance and clearly ready to take her on. You can tell. You can tell that like she's coming up with the one Dirk like to be like the oh this is what I want this is what I'm trying to get you to focus on. You can see she has another in her other hand. Nice. Oh, okay. I always fall for that one. That's the one. That she, <laughs> that's that's the one that she means she means to hit. So what do you do? Um. I'll say. A blade behind her is the truth you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> I can really think of anything. Roll plus play. intelligence. <laughs> yeah. which, is, which I think is appropriate with that one. Because it's like, <laughs> I like how just in your, in your stress, you just say this random thing. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah. And of course, I failed too. So. Yeah. Uh, okay. I think you're both, you're both getting, you're both getting <laughs> the brunt of it here. Oh, she God. goes underneath your sword easily, Rucker, and just like, and just comes across with like, deep slash with her right hand Dirk. You take a d10 plus five armor counts. And same deal with you, Weary. She just like, uh, <laughs> like she kind of spins around and kind of sticks you with both. Same amount of damage. What, I'm sorry, what did you say one. the damage was? Uh, she does a d10 plus five. Wow, that is awesome. Uh, I take 12. Oof, woof. What are you, what are you down to hit point wise? Uh, oh, I'm at four. <laughs> okay. Wow. And if you have armor, rec or if either of you have armor, you get to subtract that from it. That's with armor subtraction. I rolled an eight. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so D10 plus five, I rolled a 12, but I have three armor, so okay. I take nine. Cool. I'm going to cut back over to Isabella. So Isabella, you have the room here with, with what Caspian on his, on his gigantic bed. <laughs> what do you do? Right. So I like like slowly crawl up, hit like the bed until I'm like over top of him. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like waiting for him to like wake up or, and, I, and I'll try and I'll try and wake him if it's not apparent that it's gonna happen soon. You can wake him up, that's fine. Yeah. And he sees you, he's on the bed, he sees you, uh, ostensibly a reasonably attractive woman. And he says, oh, have we already moved on to that part of the festivities? Yes, we are at that point in the party. And I'll like reach, and like, st like, start to like stroke his thighs, and then I'll start to freeze them. Oh, nice! What are you trying to do here? Are you trying to get some information out of him or what? Yeah. Uh, like I'm, good. I'm basically going to disable him here and try and frighten him with my magic to tell me what I want to know. Mm, good. Um, I guess it's parlay, right? In a sense. Um, let's read yeah. parlay moves. See if that makes any sense. Um, and as or my race ability, when you parlay, you can always offer to cast a spell as leverage. This is me casting a spell as leverage. I love it. Yeah, yeah, uh, Let's get that charisma roll on the table. See how it goes. Okay. I don't need, I don't need the cast a spell roll. You can just, we'll just keep it in the picture for now. Oh, damn it. Six, and I think that's a plus zero. Uh, Let me make sure. Yeah, plus zero. Well, give me your opening move. What do you say? What do you do? Um, Like, after, I, after I've, like, frozen him frozen his legs or whatever um i'd be like what what have you done where's i know that i know that this place is outside of normal bounds logan must be here too and 
you know, you're, you're freezing his legs and he kind of like, at first it's painful, but then he's kind of like, just kind of horrified, right? Because he can't feel his legs anymore, you know? It's, and, and he's kind of, and he's like, he's like, witch hunter. I was wondering when you were going to show yourself. This is Logan, Logan Stormbreaker. Logan Stormbreaker, who has struck me down so many times, over and over and over again. Logan Stormbreaker finally met his end. He's not coming back, I fear. His loop is broken. Uh, and you know it's true. That's my move. Okay. And I'm just like, and I'm just in denial. I'm just like, you liar. And like, I like grab like one of his arms and like pull it up and then like stick my hand on it. And I'll like freeze it until it's brittle and just crack it off. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty greasy. And he can't scream. It's not painful, right? It's just kind of horrifying. Like he sees it and he's like, and he's like, and and he kind of like you can see like a bead of sweat like no matter how many times you've struck down lord caspian gall it's always horrifying it's always terrifying to him right um the sense of dread that he suppresses with these parties might be his own right and he just uh and he says do what you want with me i'm not going to tell you where the key is we'll find the key i don't give a damn about the key like, well, then end it. And I'm like, I look at him and I'm like, I will, but it won't be quick. Do we cut there? Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, back to the fight. All right, um, I'll get this fight done and then we'll take a quick, we'll take a quick break to do the finale of the session. So, um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, she's got the upper hand here. Um, Weary, what do you do? Um, when she plunges the, I guess I got hit with the secondary blade when I tried to intervene. Uh, she slashed, she slashed Rutger and then took both into you. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, what I do is I use my hand to um, grab her hand to like basically stop her from removing the blade. And mm. then I go to chop off her hand. Nice. Uh, give me a defy danger strength to see if you can kind of just hold her in place. See how that goes. Okay. That might give an opening to um, to Rucker, honestly. So. Uh, yeah, I got a nine. Nice. Uh, I think you're not going to be able to cut off her hand or anything like that, but you will be able to kind of hold her hold her in place, right? What does that look like when she goes to like pull the daggers out? What do you do? Um. Yeah, she goes like I imagine her taking like um uh, some gratification from landing these blows against us um like maybe even taunting us and she goes to uh, withdraw them and that's when weary raises a hand kind of like struggling and bleeding and there's like you know a bunch of wounds and blood pouring from him and then he reaches up and grips her wrist and keeps it there and maybe startles her a little bit. I think um, I think what's kind of at stake here, what the danger is, is like, I'm going to give Rucker a free hit on her, like just straight up roll damage. Um, but if you don't kill her, Rucker, it, with your with your strike, I think she's going to like just be able to, to she'll kind of use her weight to push the daggers deeper into Weary. So Rucker, if you want to take the strike, all you got to do is just roll your damage. Oh, okay. well. I hope I don't screw this up, but uh, chances are not good for her to die in one shot. Here we is go. It is it safe to say I open myself up to, to danger for more damage? <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you do, Rucker? Uh, I have a D10 plus 1 D4. This is sharp plus 2 piercing and uh, plus 1 damage. So just uh, getting all that out of the way. Here we go. Got a good shot taking her out. Um, that is a rolled six, uh, plus one for a total of seven. Um, with okay. that is two piercing. Um, if you, I'll give you the benefit of hack and slash. If you expose your, if you expose yourself to her hit, I'll give you the extra. Oh, totally. Six. Totally do that. So let me do that thing now. Yeah. All right. Uh, two more. So, uh, we'll call it. That's good. Um, 
she's going to get a hit on you, but you're going to kill her. Just give me that whole, give me the whole thing, Rucker. What does it look like? Oh, hold on. Let me roll the chance and see how bad she gives me back. Yeah, true. Fair enough. <laughs> Oof. A seven uh, plus five would be another 12. Uh, so a total of nine points that he takes in the doing. This was a, a harsh little fight here. Uh, you get one free reroll. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I'll do that. I'm going to re-roll this. Thank you very, very much for this thing that I often forget about my own character. There we go. It's a four. It's much better. Four plus <laughs> keep, five, keep, nine, keep minus three, six. So. Hey. Give me, give me the wrap-up. Make it look however you wish. You take so she, she stabs Weary, and uh, Weary grabs the one of the blades at the kind of the little cross guard, and the other blade at the actual, like he ha he gets the blade itself and holds it, and Rucker just takes the advantage and he comes up, double handed, and he strikes at her back, uh, and you can hear a bit of a snap, and when she, her knees start to buckle, he kicks her off of her own blades that she was holding into Weary, and he glances at Weary. Like, do you want the final blow? Because I am in mid swing to take off her head. <laughs> nice. Okay, I, I guess I, I guess I will get the truth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good. Um, let's take a quick two or three uh, three minute break. We'll come back and we'll do the key bit. Right. Okay. <laughs> That was pretty badass, David. <laughs> With the freezing hand action. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> Should see the, the state that she leaves him in. Yeah, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's not... Um, That's the warm-up. <laughs> yeah. She's 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 not she's she's pretty pretty dark. Every time I try to do something really cool, usually in a battle, I always end up failing the rolls. <laughs> uh. Yeah, she was um, a pretty strong opponent. Like, that's a crap ton of damage. Oh, yeah. I always do really well at rolls that don't involve my life. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you get close? Did, were you, how many do you have left at the end of that, Wary? Four? Oof. Looking Four, yeah. Looking rough, looking rough. Yeah. yeah it, it's kind of interesting, though, too. Like, every time he goes to this Caspian place, he always tries to get information from, like, Phantom Court or, or Caspian. And almost always, he almost he gets messed up, and then someone has to save him, and then he never gets the actual truth from them, right? He's always, it's always <laughs> like so close. It's always out of your grasp, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Her head has gone lolling off, flying, uh, you know, metal clanging, banging up against the, the, the wall. Her body slumps down. She bleeds real blood. She's no actual phantom or ghost. Her blood is pooling around your feet. Weary, what do you do? Um, I think he turns to, to Rutger and says, thank you. As usual, when I try to do things alone, I always need a little help from my friends. <laughs> Without you, I'd surely be dead. So I, I thank you. Claps you on the back a little harder than he probably should. Turning off the camera. No, he doesn't. <laughs> Turning off the what? Yeah, he made a joke about the camera issue. It should. Oh. <laughs> Stupid yeah. camera. Oh, it was, right. not, it, was, it was not very good, so I don't blame uh, you for not catching up. Oh, um, I, then, I'm, I'm sure that we can find some unguents or salves or something to heal those wounds. I've got some bandages, actually. Um, oh. So I could use that. I could not find a place in my pockets and uh, within my cloak to place such things. You are wiser than I. Do you think perhaps there's a poison she used that we should... Those are extremely painful strikes. <laughs> I think she is just clever and practiced. Uh, and I don't feel any poisons. She's just really good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you can't sell techniques of a dead woman. I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the key? Um, I suppose now we can get to business. <laughs> uh, point of order: you can you can apply bandages if you want. So, uh, sure, yes, that's four. Okay, um, I guess I'll use all three because sure. the way I roll, it would be wise. That'll take a sec. I'm going to go back to Isabella. Isabella, how do you resolve? What? How's the scene end with Lord Caspian? Um, I think that you just see her like leaving the room and there are like frozen tears on her face. Um, and over her shoulder, you can see like in a pile in the middle of the room, like kind of askance in this mound of ice is Lord Caspian's like torso and head. And, uh, and like these great icicles are just like grow still growing up and he's still like partially alive, but it's, it's not going to be long before that's not the case. There's a part of me that wants Lord Caspian to mutter as you kill him with ice, mutter about Logan, let it go. Just let it go, Isabella. Uh, so. Um, that's so bad. <laughs> so bad. Where do you go? What do you do? Um, I'll like, I'll meet up with the rest of them. I go to the trophy room. 
Okay. Yeah, you're there while they're kind of patching up. No problem. Uh, they've got, you've got a minute. I mean, they're kind of like, um, yeah. Rucker, are you doing any kind of healing? Or are you just cool with school right now? There's a goblet of wine. I drank that, but otherwise, no. <laughs> uh, Isabella, can you help out Rucker? He's looking pretty, he's looking pretty bleedy right now. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll like, I'll like kind of half stumble into the room and I've, I've like brought like more alcohol for my, for myself. Like, like I've just like brought like a wine bottle and I'm just, and a little flute and I'm just like pouring it and I see how like, I see the blood all over the floor and I'm just like, what a mess. Um, and I'll like toss you a little glowing vial. It's a healing potion. No, nah, thank you. Heal was 10, right? Yep. Wow. Cool. I'll just say that my last DM was pretty, like, not very forthcoming with he healing him, so I'm pretty happy to have this. <laughs> Weary. Uh, you guys get all patched up, so what do you do now? Um, I think I'll survey the, the room and look for uh, some sort of clue as to... Uh, like, because we know that there was two two meals taken up here uh, at right, a time, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so um, I'll just take in the room and look for. Uh, well, he's got proclivities for hidden things, so I'll, I'll be mm -hmm. looking yeah, for stuff rounds. like that. Yeah. Which is a whiz. Yes. <laughs> oh, <Paradise>. I won't. <laughs> Oh, nice. Let's see, 10. So as long as my life is not on the line, I'm okay <laughs> at rolling, that is. Um, yeah, so uh, 10. All right. Uh, you can ask one question, and then I'll kind of cut to the others when you do that. Um, that will be. This will count for the whole trophy room. So. What here is not what it appears to be. Easy. Um, there's a statue in the room that uh, you've been in this trophy room before, right? And you've seen like trophies in this exact position where this statue is that hid secret doors, right? Um, except this time it's a statue of a woman, a marble statue of a woman on her knees, holding up in both hands, uh, a, like two sets of like loosed shackles, right? And she's kind of like holding them up like that. Um, and honestly, if you were gonna like look for sort of secret passages, it's probably right there. Okay, yeah. So, I'll... You've, been, you've been to this movie before. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. This is is this the same room where we moved the statue and we went down into that? It's a different kind of trophy room, but yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. So I'll investigate that and look for the the catch. Maybe pull down on one of the chains or something yeah you can you can spend one of your follow-ups um useful or valuable i guess yeah yeah um, and yeah you'll you'll basically see that like it's a it's a spinning uh it's a spinning bit the walls kind of like very like faintly you know different like an outline of a passage is you know kind of um uh, very like subtle like sort of crevasse in the wall right and you can kind of spin the statue around so. gotcha um and what is about to happen Honestly, nothing. I would say that like guards and stuff would come to investigate, but uh, the the party, uh, the, the drinking party in the song is is has been you know the, those truths have really carried forward here, and so you guys are you're kind of cool like right now. You can just kind of go. So. Yeah, I've in my head, I always I'm picturing them singing the Jaws song, you know, the Show Me the Way to Go Home <laughs> song. Yeah. Uh, well, Rucker, while he's doing that, what do you do? The potion was helpful. The wine bottle's more helpful. I am mostly watching your man who's an expert and what he does, do what he does, and making sure yeah. no one comes upon us, which it seems like we're fine. Uh, yeah, it's all cool. It's all cool. Uh, it's very cool, like you. daggers or things that <laughs> take. I might slip one into a pocket, but otherwise. Well, uh, there was the, the woman. She had her two dirks, right? I mean, like, oh, yes. I will take those dirks. They look magnificent. she have any other identifying things about this phantom court thing that she, I mean, she bragged about before I, mean, she, I she killed her. She a mask and she um, you beheaded her and um, I think she mostly just wears like kind of simple like simple tasteful traveling clothes underneath. Um, 
What, where, how would you search? What would you look for? Oh, well, I don't want to touch her naughty bits. She's dead, but I still respect yeah. that. Uh, so I check to see if she has her pouches or um, anything uh, in her. Well, in her. She wear boots or slippers? I don't know. I don't, if she wears boots, then there's probably something in the boots. I've learned she to always has, look in boots. She has a scroll, a small scroll that you can tuck into a pocket, um, rolled up. And uh, that's the main thing you find. Um, she's got like on her person, as far as like, I mean, she just had her blades and that's kind of it. She wasn't like here for adventuring or travel, right? She's here doing a job, but she does have this like scroll in her pocket. And if you unroll the scroll, you'll see that it contains, um, it contains biographical information about all of you. I'll read about Isabella. <laughs> That's really interesting. Indeed. Well, if you do that, if you take a minute, you're going to learn that Isabella used to actually work with the keepers, right? We know that about Isabella. Isabella, what are you doing during all this? Um, I've just like thrown myself into a chair and discarded my mask. And I'm just like holding this goblet and like pouring wine into it. And it's kind of like my hands are kind of shaking. And I'm just kind of drinking and speaking to the to the room, like to myself and I guess whoever wants to listen. I'm just, like, I threw myself into this loop, eyes wide open, and Logan isn't here. I don't know where I'm going to look next, but now I'm going to have to do this over and over again. If Logan isn't here, perhaps the circle for him is broken, and you remaining here will only be a waste of your time, Isabella. That's, there's not an option not to remain here once you've thrown yourself in. There has to be an option because Logan isn't here. This, this doesn't make sense. This is you shut up. Head. Shut up. <laughs> Oops. <yeah. laughs> um, I'm. You know that. I have um, come and gone from this circle before. I don't remember exactly how, but I have done it, and you will as well. You're here, aren't you? You've not escaped it. You'll keep coming back here. And I'll keep leaving. If I can't find Logan on the outside, I can't find him here, then I'm going to have to go for some more drastic action. Jason's planting evil right around things. This time, right around this time is when you'll kind of get the, the thing to spin. And it spins, the statue, the wall spins uh, to go to a, a very small vestibule, which has uh, stairs going down. What do you do? Focus on the task at hand. Yes, the child. I'll this, stand up and follow you. I, I imagine that she would know as well that if she was the one to turn the key, then she would know some truths too. So maybe that's your way out of the loop as well, right? Because Logan would have certainly written about it. He was turning the key all the time. <laughs> <clears throat> Messing with the keys might have got Logan killed though too, right? So... That's true. <laughs> yep. Well, you know. The child who repeats the numbers. That is your secondary mission. Lord Caspian Gall being dead. You guys going down. Mm -hmm. I'll or go. do you refuse and say, I'm done with this and walk out? It's an option, right? I'm... I'm... I'm a good robot. <laughs> what about you guys? <laughs> I think we should continue. Uh, Isabella, you do seem troubled. Um, did you not find what you wished, I assume, from Lord Caspian? No, he was less than helpful. Though he may have saved me a great deal of time by being so. I assume that that part of our duties have been completed? Yes. And let's save this key. 
And it is worth noting that I have spoken to Caspian many times and not all that he says comes to pass. He spews all forth of, of stuff. Not, not everything is true. Hold that. Let's, let's just finish this mission. Let's go into the bowels. Who's in the lead? Uh, I could be in the lead because I remember the last time I went down these stairs, there was a trap and it fucked me up pretty good. So, <laughs> so what do you do? Um, I'll be searching for traps for sure. <laughs> it was that step. Ah, so paying attention to the steps. Uh, mm -hmm. Give me traps, but see how it goes. Okay. Dicks. See if I can re-roll. I, I hit re-roll selected and it didn't do anything. So I'll just put it in again. Uh, yeah, you have to actually like, click on top of a couple of them to to make a reroll. Oh, oh, okay. Whoops. Um, but I got an eight. So I can ask one question. Let me just look at that. Trap expert. I, is there a trap here? And if so, what activates it? There is a trap here. Um, it is, there is a, there's a step um, like you anticipate. It looks slightly different than the other steps. Uh, stepping hard on that step causes the trap to spring. If mm. you look up and down or all around, which I assume you would, you will see situated high up. So it's like a spiraling staircase, right? But, but it maintains a pretty high ceiling throughout. If you look up, you're going to see a large wooden dragon head, a really large wooden dragon head with like an open maw, and it looks like it spits out something on, onto you. Oh, great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I will point out the step to each of you and attempt to circumvent it. You can, no problem. Um, dragon head looks really familiar, Rucker really really familiar but you make your way down and eventually you get to the bottom of the steps there's a landing and a door frame that lets out into the old city of eagles reach eagles reach proper is built on top of a much older version of the city um, built up on top of it over the course of many hundreds of years okay and it lets out into a vast open plaza, I guess, um, that looks out directly onto a scene that you'll see on the image board right here. I've made it big. This is kind of like your perspective as you're looking at it here. This, this, it looks like that, the sort of like dark blue light, the, um, a big massive cathedral, right? with steps that go up and with different levels and tiers. And um, there's nothing else around that would indicate that like Lord Caspian goes anywhere else, right? Like this is clearly meant to open up into this thing, right? I'll just go around the table and find out what you're each doing, Isabella. Um, so this is pretty vast. Um, so I'm just kind of trying to take it all in and see if, if like this is the place that like they would keep a child like it's a very strange circumstance but like see if there's any any signs of that like they're keeping someone down here i'll probably give you a dr we find out what everybody else is doing that uh rucker what about you uh, look upon the long stairs let me see not entirely sure how this architecture exists underneath such a manner. It I'm goes gonna... quite, it's quite a descent. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, will, I will stay close to my two allies here and try to be ready to defend them in case something ominous comes. I like that. I'm like, oh, if, if something does jump out at you guys, I'll give you automatic defend roll. What Thank about you, Weary? Um, 
Last time I searched for footprints, I want to do something similar, but not exactly the same. Um, I want to be trying to see, um, yeah, like where this kid might have gone, assuming it's a child, I guess. Isabella, you can have the principal role and then aid from where if you need it on discern realities. And I'll tell Rutger too. Um, something tells me we're about to find out exactly how horrible Caspian is to make you feel just a little bit better about his fate. <laughs> so I have a seven. Okay. Um aid won't matter so much. Uh, depending on what, what kind of information you get, though, I might give you a follow-up DR, too, as long as the situation's not too hot. Uh, but what do you ask? What here is not what it appears to be. Mm. The space is incredibly quiet. Uh, this is part of the old city. You had to go down quite a long ways to get here. It's part of the old city. It's incredibly still, incredibly quiet. Um, maybe the skittering of rats and the, and the squeak of bats, but for the most part, it's just this almost oppressive silence, right? But you do hear something coming from sort of like near the top of the steps of what you're seeing, like imagining, if you imagine it's some sort of like old cathedral or temple, it might be coming from there but you hear they're distinctly words. They're not like the sounds of like creatures. You just can't quite make out what the words are. Uh, Weary, with that in mind, what are you doing? Um, we're, we're pretty, at least Rutger and I, we're pretty like damaged. So I think I would find like cover or um, a way to, yeah, like m make our way without disturbing these creatures. Mm -hmm. um, we'll say you're being as quiet as you can, and then what? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll be looking for where the people have traversed and where the boy might have gone mm -hmm. and try to find, like, plot a path in such a way that we are perhaps as far away as possible from these the screeching and stuff. This might be a good time to use your heist move. Um, oh, I yeah. Think, right. I think with, like, the little words that... that, that Isabella picked up like as a sort of focal point of like, oh, there's something going on there. Maybe you can kind of scout around and figure out what's going on in the complex. And then that would be you answer that would be you posing the highest questions, I think. That sounds good to everybody. Um, sure. what what are they? Po pose away. Um, so do I just ask all of them? It sounds like uh, we need to look at the mode because I don't actually know. So um, I'll copy and paste it here. Oh. Unless you did you put it in the sheet or um no i i don't know how to make another block okay <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'll, but i'll I teach you google google drive later <laughs> yeah um but i copy and pasted it in, in the chat there for you okay when you take time to make a plan to steal something name the thing you want to steal okay the child and ask the gm these questions okay you just get to ask so go away go ahead uh, so who will notice it's missing no one. Um, well, uh, no one. No one. Lord Caspian's the only person who probably knows this down here. So. Um, what's its most powerful defense? Let's say you're moving up to the the more like cathedral area of where you heard the voices coming from. Instantly, that voice you can hear it a little more clearly now. It is. It's just thirty five, eighty one, nineteen, four, six, twelve. 902, 18, 6. It's just numbers being repeated over and over and over again. Well, not even repeated, just a string of numbers. Mm -hmm. But the most powerful defense, you see scrawled hastily on a bit of like a column, like near the entrance to this like sort of main sept cathedral area. Be, I'll type it in. Beware dread governess Goldruga. Oh, well, the, the next question is who will come after it? <laughs> yeah, and you get a sense as you kind of reach the threshold of the cathedral, your 
going to get a sense that at the top of the, the tall sort of vaulted ceiling of the of the main area and the main sept there's definitely something dark and big crawling up there mm -hmm. and does who else wants it uh probably not super relevant to this so i don't worry about it yeah you okay um in the scene i imagine a weary pointing up and the camera like pointing up to those the scuttling i think that would be you know, I'll, I'll leave that up to you guys how you what you want to do about that <laughs> um you guys get plus forwards for plus one forwards for following up though I'll, I'll, I'll let everybody take advantage of it so um so you have you have you have the lay of the place big huge like main like sort of it's like a cathedral sept as you kind of get up there and you look in uh dread governess gold druga probably that thing crawling around on the ceiling and you're not really sure where the kid is except you can hear it it's louder now probably at the far end of the of the sept area right and just these numbers 19 81 4 12 62 right yeah uh i might rip a piece of cloth and put it in my ears to so i don't hear these numbers it seems sinister to me <laughs> isabella what do you uh, mean? Yeah. um i've kind of like put both my arms like inside the other like robe sleeve so i'm just kind of like standing there like taking in the situation I'm like well what do you want to do i can try and i can try and freeze the thing crawling about on the ceiling but i i cannot guarantee results on something that big mm. and we are wounded maybe uh discretion is prudent sad to say i agree we are not at a point where fighting that beast would be wise and i i pull out my sword and i'm no longer worried about because if we're not in a party and i'll ask uh, ancestors where could we hide and make camp and heal so that we could defeat these monsters mm, good roll. cool and so that is a charisma roll Ten. Oh, nice. and with the plus one forward, then put in eleven. Doesn't matter, but I did it. I love it. You have a vision of a relative of yours, of uh, two relatives, a man and a woman. Except you're seeing them as a boy and a girl, and it is a church, a country church that you may recognize from your homeland. And we see this man and this this or this boy and this girl, um, some distant aunt or uncle or cousin of some sort, who knows. You see them whispering about a plan. There's something they want to do, right? They they in, they aim to sneak into the church and steal the wine that is stored beneath the altar but they decide that it would be too risky to go in through the front doors. And so instead they circle around to the back where there is, um, there is a window and they're able to lift the window up, sneak in through the back, grab the wine and sneak back out with none of the church workers being aware of them. And so the insight is sneak around to the back. <laughs> Sweet. I think Rucker asked the question of the sword. You hear nothing in response. Uh, and then he says, we should sneak around in the back. Uh, I incline my head in, in acquiescence. <laughs> and then I'll try to lead them towards the back. You should, yeah. Um, there's a this large structure, this large complex has like a, like a little, not quite a catwalk. It's more just like a narrow sidewalk that kind of, that kind of goes around to the back area um, with a little railing and you're kind of making your way across. And on camera, if we were kind of zoomed out, we just see you guys, you just look like little ants, right? Like scuttling along the, the, the walkway. But you get to the, to the rear of the structure and there is in fact a, a large, um, 
it's a large stained glass, um, no longer gets any sun, and uh, in its heyday, it was probably very beautiful, but it's just a large stained glass of like a warrior, some kind of knight. And uh, does anybody have torchlight? I need a torchlight here, I think. So I'm give me an adventuring gear for a torch, that'd be handy. But if you um, do that, I'll tell you that you can kind of see through the glass a little bit and see that there is, um, there is, you're near the altar area and there is a child on, um, basically the altar area is kind of like a cage. There's like a metal cage and the child is just there, like kind of sitting on the altar, muttering his numbers. What do you do? Anybody? Who um, wants to jump in? Um, I don't have uh, adventuring gear, but I have lots of money. I could have spent it. Yeah, sure, I'll take that. That's fine. Yeah. How much is adventuring gear? Mm, I want to say it's like 15 or something. We'll say 15 for now. So. Sure. Probably more, but I don't know. You can have some torches in any right? <laughs> yeah, okay. Good. Um, I want to be kind of like sidled up to Isabella and say, are you the one, are you, are you specifically planning on turning the key for any specific purpose? Uh, kind of trying to feel out if you're, you know, trying to yeah, figure out what's going kid? on with Logan. It's an open question. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we're going to take the kid out of here. Oh, are we? <laughs> we, just, we just pick up the kid and we leave. He's been trapped here, right? Well, Rutger would have been told that we kill keys, right? Um, you can return it to the church as well. And... Yeah, those oh, are... oh, can you? Yeah, oh. we don't necessarily, we kill keepers. We don't necessarily kill keys. Ooh. Right, right, right. <laughs> totally so asking that. for the adventuring gear had me look at my gear. I have poultices and herbs one weight. Does that heal anything? Yeah. Or is it... it heals seven. Yeah, that yeah. heals. I'm going to use that. Sure. You could have done so, that earlier in the thing. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I'll do that. And uh, Adventure Gear is 20 coin. Okay. So, perfect. so do you guys want, like, is this actually going to be a heist then where we steal a kid? We're not like, we're not yeah. I mean, we're, I think we're stealing the kid one way or the other. Whether or not we use the key is another matter. Right. Mm -hmm. Using the key is killing the kid, though, right? To be clear. Uh, maybe. No, who knows? I mean, you, you guys have no idea, really. So. No, yeah. but I, I I slew the keepers, so we would we need to do that procedure at some point. Uh, we will, yeah, I'll roll on it. I'll let you go that roll later. So, uh, Rich, there's okay. a couple of custom moves that, that kind of dictate how we deal with keepers and keys. But we'll talk about okay. That so should um, I can just try to go in under the cover of darkness and um like bind the the kid, and we can try to to slip him out or them out um, without the creature taking notice. Mm. Is that the plan? I'm thinking about it. And I wonder if I can cast a spell to induce a stasis on this area so that when we remove the kid, the constant chanting of numbers continues for some time oh so that the governess won't know it's gone right mm. i like that i think that's really good it's an interesting it's, it's, i think it's i think that's a yeah i think that's a that sounds pretty cool to me um yeah sure we'll see but there's just the, the step a though is just getting the kid right so mm -hmm. uh, who's going in there to make that move weary i mean you're probably the sneakiest yeah um yeah, like perhaps I th thread my way up to behind uh, the child and as I go to try to slip um, some sort of bond around the, the mouth, I think, to shut the kid up first, that's when the spell would be cast to continue it. Mm -hmm. um, well, so there's no, uh, the, the kid itself is no danger. So I, um, I think like um, if you... I think if, if you if you guys try to lift the window, he's gonna hear you. Like he's it, he, this is his living space. He's been here. He's super cognizant of everything going on in the room, right? It's not that big of a space, this altar space. 
Um, but he's no danger, right? I'll just tell you that out of the character. He's not a danger at all. Um, as you kind of lift the window and kind of sneak in, you know, he'll like, he'll kind of like look at you. He might've even seen your torchlight already. And he'll say, he'll say 55, 61, eight. Uh, <laughs> is there any kind of pattern? Can I like spout lore about it? Like, There's not know? really. Oh, you know, okay. Trying to sort it out, yeah. And then, okay. and then he'll and he'll kind of point. He'll point at the ceiling of the cathedral, and he'll say, he'll say nine, eighteen, four, sixty-two, eighty-one. I'll uh, I'll try to signal Isabella to cast her spell to keep the the things going. And try to be as non-threatening as possible to the to the kid. Well, how do you try to calm them down? What do you do? Um, I wonder if I have something to offer. Ooh, maybe I try to placate him with my dope bowl. <laughs> you have that, oh, you have that big glass bowl. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> like I bowl. present it sort of like as a gift to try to like placate a child with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't need a roll here. It's, we'll just keep it in the fiction. But he's like. He'll see that and he'll kind of like put his hand on it and he'll be like, 75, 42, 6. Is it the last? His hands <laughs> across the bowl. Isabella, are you casting that spell? <laughs> yeah. That would be the plan. Go for it. See how it goes. Okay. Nine. Oh, okay. plus one forward, right? Yeah, yeah. Ten. All right, cool. Uh, <laughs> what do you, you have to still choose something, don't you? On a ten plus, choose one. Uh, it won't last long. We'll need to hurry to take advantage of it. Okay, I like that. Um, so basically, you're going to have time to... The numbers will will be spoken long enough for you to get the um, get the kid out of the of the altar room and then make your way to the front of the cathedral back up to the stairs okay at, at that point all bets are off all right <laughs> so but you you'll get that far um where we just give me give me the rest of that scene as you guys are kind of you know um minds of moria style like grabbing the kid and running back towards the uh, you know towards the, the steps yeah um the kids i think just enchanted with the the bowl and i'm carrying him and uh yeah, he's just like a like a 10 year old kid you know kind of uh, you know dirty and plainly dressed nothing to you know sure otherwise pretty nondescript yeah so i think as soon as the spell is cast there's sort of the echo of what the boy was saying and I raised like my lips or a finger to my lips to shush the boy if he can't even be shushed because it seems like a compulsive thing perhaps um, and if he can't then I'll cover his mouth with my head and like, <laughs> sure steal him out yeah. Yeah. yeah and then I just uh I sweep him up and we, I think we just race for for the uh entry nice um Right by the, by the time you get to like maybe like say the front of that complex, you know, you, you kind of get there to the front of that complex. You guys are going to hear like you know at a certain point you'll hear this roar, this like um, like like a roar of agony, right? Like a, it's loud. It echoes out loudly throughout this space. Um, Rutger, they're kind of going like um, you know they're, they're they've got the kid. They're kind of rushing down the steps, getting back, trying to get up to the steps. Rucker, you're going to be the one, if you turn around, you're going to see the creature at the top of the steps, right? Um, I'll just, I'm going to put the image in here so you guys know what it looks like. Oh, like it's blocking our path? No, no, no. It's just behind, oh. it's still behind you. But um, it's going to, it will give chase though. <laughs> so <laughs> um, let's see here. So I think this is it. Yeah, that's it. Um, you see that thing. It's a, it's it's very big, uh, winged, armed, four so squat body, four legs. But principally, its main upper torso is just a big maw of teeth, right? That kind of like snaps. And, and this thing is like open, and you see it, Rucker. It just kind of roars. It does have wings. Um, it is it is clamoring to get to. Let's let's imagine there's like a 
there's, let's imagine there's like an overhang, right? Like a sort of, uh, like a like a passageway with columns, like an overhang that leads into the cathedral area. And Rucker, you see it, um, it's like clamoring to get out. And as soon as it gets past that overhang, it will be able to, to take flight and be able to grab, get to you guys much faster. What would you do? Well. Give me your Gandalf moment here. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> I, it, it, it looks from the image that is too large that, like, if he somehow flung a shield, it would knock it over. It, it's it, it's pretty big. I think if, like, uh, at scale, you're probably, you can, you can easily fit in the mall, right? It's, it's a pretty big creature. I don't wish to test that. <laughs> Fair enough. I don't, I don't know. Um, uh, you take a second. I'll give you a dr. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's do that. Let's mm -hmm. uh, let's do this. What could be the the name of a like a podcast? Maybe. Yeah, I'd like to discern realities. Try to figure out. So, Please do. Yeah. All right. Uh, roll plus whiz. And I've already used my plus one forward, so this is a flat roll for me. I'm selecting the dice I've already rolled and re-rolling selected. I got a five. <laughs> five. Indeed, indeed. I'm going to take over your fiction for just a minute. Okay. Um, you, you see an opportunity, all right? There is... I mentioned that it's like running beneath this overhang and you see that one of the columns this is a really old structure. One of the columns has like a distinct crack weaving its way up, right? And you might be able to like, you're thinking, oh, if I take that out, I can drop part of the roof on this thing and that'll give us time to escape. And I think you go for that, right? You like just rush up there, you know, you've got, you've got Ben Bar's left gates, right? You go up there and you, you know, maybe try to smash it up and that might still be an option, but Basically, the creature is, moves a little quicker than you anticipate, and so and before you can get to that, it like uh, basically like the the maw part of it, like kind of it kind of like leashes out or lashes out from beneath the the overhang, just maw open, um, trying to cut you off. Basically, what do you do? Ah, cool. So the mouth thing cuts in front of trying to to cut me off. I... Mm -hmm. Is it drawn away from the others? Like, the, can they get? The, they they will be safe. Yep, they'll be safe. Sweet, they will escape. Yeah, I want to cut this thing into pieces. Then go for it. Hack a slash. Oh. Yeah, I'll just draw out to uh, Twilight Reaver and uh, and strike at it. Reave away. Give me that roll. All right, here we go. Oh, that is a five, but <laughs> it's a hack and slash, so that means it's a seven, which means it will trade damage. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Or, or I, I may not do a move on. I might do something else. But um, I get, in any case, uh, roll your damage on it. Okay. Uh, all right. So I am merciless, and uh, I have a d10. So here we go with damage. That is a pitiful five plus one six, two piercing. It does not strike you. Um, uh, uh, it, it, what it's going to do is basically it's going to try to like fly away. It's going to not engage you. It's going to try to fly away and fly away into the darkness of the Undercity. Um, presumably out of character to maybe in character to like go hunt down the child later, <laughs> right? Like, like go find it later, um, not dealing with you. Um, uh, and that's what it's going to do. It's going to basically get underneath and it's going to attempt to take flight, but you will get your hit on it. What does it look like? Oh, uh, I, I think that he, it's got four wings, so six points. I think I chop off a wing, right? Nice. Do you have Forceful and Messy or either on those? Or? Um, I probably do. Let me check real quick. Um, see, piercing, uh, serrated average plus one damage, ancient and close, so no. Okay. Not. I like chopping off a wing. I think that's good. I think that I think that would give you an opening. Like it's trying to take flight away from you. It's not even trying to fight you. It's just trying to take flight. Um, what will you do then? Jump on it. Sweet. Um, I love that. Uh, let's say you get on it. Then what would you? What would you do? Uh, sweet. So I jump on it, and um, and then I'm just going to start like holding on to a wing and just start stabbing it in the chest, nice. trying to stay away from his mom. It's just stab and rip. It's serrated, right? So I can kind of rip along the mm. the scaly hide and try to just open it up and eviscerate the thing. 
Nice. Uh, um, give me a divide danger strength to hold on, and then okay. as long as you hit, you'll get those. You'll get those. Uh, it's it's going to try to shake you off, basically. All right. Here we go. That is a seven plus two nine. Nice. Um, so I think what's going to happen here is basically uh, it is going. I'm going to give you a hit. You're going to you're going to be able to strike it, um, and then it's going to just try to um, it's going to try to it's going to basically lose you. Try to it'll, it'll wrench you off, and you have to come up with some other way of staying onto it. So, uh, but you'll get your hit in. You'll give me okay. your damage on that. I will do my damage. I'm going to do it in red because I'm starting to confuse myself here, and I'll do it this way. Oh, that is much better. That is 11 points of damage. Nice. Uh, what'd you do before? Do you remember? Uh, what I did before was six. Mm. Uh, that's enough. Um, you're going to fall, and that's going to suck, but you are going to kill the creature. Describe it. Sweet. Uh, it's exactly as he hoped. He, he grabs onto where the wing meets the body. It's the strongest joint, and stabs it in in the this Twilight Reaver just hums as it slides in like a hot knife through butter. And then he pulls the serrated edge along, and it is, it's almost like he isn't even sawing. It's strong enough to rip along the flesh, and then the, the guts and everything kind of spill out. It's totally ruining his nice little cloak he paid extra money for, but uh, the mink falls off, poor thing. <laughs> Uh, and, and, you, and, you, and you go tumbling. Yeah, yeah he's going to try to like angle it, write <laughs> it body. down. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Uh, you're going to get. Uh, <laughs> you take a D10, no armor. <laughs> Ooh, nice, nice, nice. Okay, I do have you know, just just clarify. I have um, iron hide. Will that count as armor for this? It's okay if not. I just want to ask. Oh uh, no, I'm just I'm just going. You just a straight D10, like just whatever. The, okay. whatever's on the D10 is what you get. So. I always four. interpret armor as like there has to be a certain degree of like martial skill involved in the. Sure, I was just yeah. saying there's a there's a move I have and I wasn't. Sure oh oh was oh oh! Job. What is what was, I'm sorry. What does that do? Uh, it's that? a move called Iron Hide. You gain plus one armor. I didn't know if that oh, was just oh, okay. um, actually tougher or what. I don't care. It's four points. I'll give you, I'll give you that you. one. I'll give you that. Okay, one. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, so you took three points. Okay. Um, yeah, you go crashing down. Uh, the, everybody else, you'll see that in your, you know, your peripheral vision as you're kind of getting to the stairs, because all that happened really quickly, right? And um, and you're making your way up. Um, Is the get kid back up sad safely. about it or happy? Oh, what a good question. Um, I think as you as the creature's there and it's like death throes or whatever, as you know, laying on the ground and and you know, you see Rucker kind of rolling away from it, right, and trying to like get, catch up to you guys. The kid like looks back and he's got like his, you, you know, his face, maybe one of you holding him like that and the other one can see his face. Like it kind of drops a little bit and he kind of looks out and he's like 41. So sad. <laughs> <laughs> and then you take him back up to the, uh, back up to the mats. 41 is the loneliest number. Uh, that's the end of our session. Um, I want to find out. Let's do the kill a keeper move. Uh, let's do that. I'll paste in the text to that move so we, we can all see it. Uh, that was you, right, Isabella? Yes. Right. Paste that into the hangout text. In the in the movie version of this, is it? Uh, it'd be neat if the shots were like interposed with. Um, Isabella leaving him to die slowly as she left, and maybe they both die at the same time. As like as the beast makes a scream or whatever, it goes back to Gaul and he screams and lets out a last breath too. <laughs> <laughs> maybe <laughs> I'm not necessarily signing on to that, but I but I but I'm here for the I'm here for your creativity. Uh, slay a keeper. <laughs> <laughs> Would you deliver the killing blow to a keeper? You learn some of their secrets. You may select one of the following. Take plus one ongoing uh, to any move directly related to hunting the next keeper. Take plus one forward if you choose to turn the key. Uh, reveal part of the keeper's secret plan. At the end of the session, I will ask you, what did you glimpse when, uh, what did you see when you glimpsed the keeper's secret plan? Tell me three distinct images you saw in your mind's eye when you delivered the killing blow and then mark XP. Um, which of those do you want? If I had any idea what this keeper did, I might take that plus one to turn the key. Oh, what the key does. Yeah, I don't know. That's really wide open, honestly. So. Yeah. Um, is that to turn this specific key or any key? 
it's just to turn the key. So any key. Yeah. Okay, then I'll I'll do that. Okay. Um, out of what are we gonna? Just this is out of character stuff. But what are you guys gonna do with the child? Are you gonna actually bring him back to the church? Are you gonna keep him with you for a while or what? Um, I want to know what what his deal is before we would do anything further with him. Let's say you keep him for the next adventure then. Okay. For for Belladosk, okay. Uh, if that's cool, with the rest he'll, of the he'll fit right in. <laughs> exactly, that's what I was thinking. Any other any objections to like not immediately taking the key to the kid to the church? No, I'm completely fine with that. Subvert the church with the understanding that you might at some point. Okay. okay. Um. Good. Good. Uh. Anything else before we end the session, like in fiction? Anything else we need to do or want to address? I don't think so. I think. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, I think that was a good wrap up. Is just fleeing and the death of the creature and yeah, yeah, yeah. Caspian dying at the same time. <laughs> let's do our end of session move. Uh, let's look at uh, let's look at flags. Um, I feel like you were all hitting flags pretty good. Does anybody think they didn't hit a flag? Yeah, I think everybody hit one. Yeah, I definitely saw the. Um, Try to subtly get information about my relationship. Uh, the, the, the question. Of I don't know if that was subtle. That was the, my again, only question. question. Of subtlety is open, but I, I I'm into it if Logan's into it, so, or, or rather, uh, if David's into it. Um. <laughs> yeah, it's fine with me. Yeah, yeah. I think I think maybe it's a relative sort of subtlety, right? Um, cool. Mark and XP Rutger. Um, I s get drunk and rowdy with me. Definitely, you get that, Isabella. Um, and also the the step in and show compassion, or at least you know threaten to harm an enemy. That all worked out great. So Isabella, Mark, and XP. Weary, did you hit one? Uh, um. Oh, maybe I didn't. Let's see. Here. No, I don't think I, don't I did. Know, encouraged me to fight someone for his own gain. I don't know. Uh, maybe I saw it and I came in and helped. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of with you, Fraser, on that. I'm not sure. You spent part of the session away from the groups. So that kind of doesn't help, I think. Yeah, um, and I don't think I was the main proponent of you getting into the fight. I think you just saw it and like you just yeah, went yeah, yeah. yeah. naturally did it. Yeah, we'll skip over now. Let's look at alignments. Um, let's see here. All right. What is your alignment statement, uh, Isabella? What does it say? Uh, use magic to cause terror and fear. Oh yeah, I think you did that with Lord Caspian. I even narrated that, so yeah, go for it, Mark and XP. Uh, Rucker, you definitely got yours. You defeated a couple of worthy opponents, so go ahead, Mark and XP. Uh, Weary, what is yours? Destroy a symbol of the church. Hmm. Kind of. Um, I think I think the Phantom Court was actually striking down the Phantom Court person was good, and. Um, you guys don't know it out of character. Uh, the governess is also connected to the church, right? So you didn't really do that, but you were involved. So I don't know. Um, I'll leave it up to you, Barry. What do you think? Do you feel like you satisfied that? Um, I think so. Only that was really that hard, I... by the way. It's really hard <laughs> to say, right? Yeah. The I think it's. Um, I think I'll take it because I specifically chose not to strike her down easily, but to take her on in order to learn, learn more. more. The yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, that works. It's in the spirit of it. So Mark and XP. Cool. I don't have the moves in front of me. Somebody want to read the final three questions? Sure. Uh, to be overcome a notable monster enemy. Yes. Everyone Mark and XP. Did we learn something new and important about the world? Yeah, um, you learned a lot about like the Lord Caspian loop. You learned a lot about how the Phantom Court operates, right? Like they actually, they're, <laughs> they like, they, they came ready to, they knew about you, right? They anticipated you guys were gonna be there. Um, I'm into it, Mark and XP, what's the other one? Did we loot a memorable treasure? Sure, the child. Mark an XP for that. Um, I will be on Discord briefly. I have to get ready for Final Girl in a little bit, but um, so I'm going to jump on there for like five or ten minutes. Uh, but otherwise, uh, that was a fantastic session. Anything else? Anybody wants to say before we before we go? Uh, I was I was happy to play with everyone again. <laughs> it's been a while, Rich, and 
A little bit for David. It's been a little while for David, yeah. 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 I haven't played with Rich in like 100 years, so. Yeah, a long time. <laughs> it's, it's fun. Uh, cool, I'm going to stop this.